Good morning, Denver, Colorado. Bill and I trudge through all the snow like, we're here. like Eskimos. You're, you're at home. <laughs> we made it to the studio. You're, you're in your pajamas enjoying not going to work or school today, and we <laughs> slightly resent you just a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell you this as somebody who just drove down Parker Road. <laughs> yeah. For the love of God, stay home right now. <laughs> Unless you have a high-clearance four-wheel drive yeah. car. You're not going to make it to work anyways. No, you won't. Unless it's four-wheel drive and you've got to have at least six inches of clearance. Yes. And there's no way you're going to make anything else out there. It is a mess. I saw a number of plows and they were doing the work, but oh, you're right. Parker Road was a real nasty adventure. Side roads. Good Lord. No. That, and, that the, was, and the wow. plows are creating these big like. Yeah. Uh, piles of yep. snow in the middle of the road too. Yeah, so. which means it's really difficult, if not impossible, to change lanes. Yes. So you're 100%. in a lane and you are stuck. There was one I was telling you coming off a uh, a road down an off ramp, and this is right where a lot of the plows are coming out, and they're coming out and going on to another road, and they've created a ridge that is preventing me going where I need to. And I'm like, <laughs> you, you guys, it's like ten feet from where your the, the the fence is. How come we're not doing the? And they just and I watch two. Two plows go, go, right rrr, by. go right by and go, uh, you see me stopped here going that direction, right? I just, <sighs> oh, wow. I, I know what you're thinking. I've yeah. got to get to work. I've, I've, you know, I'm required to do that. If you are, I saw at least a dozen yeah. Priuses, Honda Accords stuck in a ditch on the way. Shout over out here. to the dude in front of me in the Mustang. <laughs> I, I appreciate <laughs> your optimism was unbelievable and off the charts. Uh, didn't do so well getting here. At least didn't I didn't see him uh, uh, get you know stuck or anything. He eventually turned off on a different road. But I'm sitting there going, dude, I I salute you. You you are my hero today. Is deciding that I got a Mustang and I'm going to do this snow thing. Uh, it's do you, not good. do you watch those? I there's an Instagram account on I seven about I seventy. That's oh, just geez. people that think they can get up Eisenhower Tunnel. Oh no, I should see that in oh, two wheel drive. Oh, geez. And, and the entire well. account is, is about those types of dopes. Yeah. It's, it's called I-70 happen. things. Oh, I have seen that one. Yes, I have seen that. I-70 things. Yes, I have seen that. I've seen more of the traffic rather than I'm going to have to look for that. The people getting stuck. I'm going to have to oh, look for that one. Oh, all the time. Yeah. In a Mustang. Yes. In the middle of a snow blizzard going, you know what I'm going to do? Up and over Eisenhower Tunnel. Yeah. It's yeah, that's going to absolutely work. <laughs> now, there, oddly enough, I've driven a lot of uh, German cars, huge Mercedes Benz fan, and even the rear wheel drive Mercedes will do well in the snow because they're German cars. However, you need to have a full gas tank because that's how they work out the balance of the car. If you have a half or third full gas tank, the Mercedes Benz two wheel drive weight, becomes, huh? yeah, there's not enough weight there. They really do balance it based on a full gas tank. You got a full gas tank, you'll do okay. Uh, today, no, 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 you're getting stuck. Uh, anything that's two wheel drive, at least for the next couple of hours, you're getting stuck. There's just no way. Just don't even try it. Te text us in. I love this text. I think uh, guys working yeah. right now in Commerce City. Hey, our people. Nicely done. I love it. Out there with New us. car rail yard in Commerce City. Hardly anything yet. So they must not be getting as much snow up there. What? Eight right. five zero five. Well, um, again, if that's Commerce City and that's out near you know Suncorn and everything else, it's just another sign that they just did a deal with the devil. That's just it. <laughs> that's it's, what they did. It's all the yeah. global warming it is. industrial waste that's, exactly that's keeping it, yeah. it warm, right? It's all yeah, it's all it's all the sun core extra <laughs> polar fluorocarbons <laughs> releasing into the air. So yes, there's a benefit of that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm looking up the Colorado State Patrol Twitter account. They yeah. have not tweeted in twelve hours. Uh oh. That's either a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> no, I think they're, they're really busy, busy right yeah, now. Exactly. I saw, like I said, oh, at wow. least a dozen cars and ditches. And I, and as a Christian, you're like good Samaritan, but then oh, I'm yeah. like, oh, Bill, I can't leave you. I, know. I would not make it to the station if I stopped to help everybody. I looked at that too. There were a couple of people I'm like, oh, I should. And like, I can't. I just, I'd be, and one, it was the, the time frame. I got to get here. Things got to get done. And I got to make sure that we're set up. And the other one was, is, and we've all done that, where you're in that and you've got the momentum. And then you stop right. where you get yeah. stuck. And I had that this morning. In fact, I made a little bit of a bad uh, decision. I'm thinking, oh, you went up the, uh, uh, there are two ways to get out of our neighborhood. One of them, I have to go up a very steep hill after getting out of the neighborhood. I turn onto a major road and have to go up a steep hill. And another one, I can kind of go and you can navigate the same hill around the neighborhood. And then you end up kind of above it. And then you drop down coming out of the other way down onto Hamden. 
Um, I, I chose poorly this morning. I start going, I'm going, oh, I went the wrong way. And <laughs> I didn't want to go around backwards and thinking, okay, maybe something's plowed, maybe something's plowed. And then I get to the stoplight and I have to make the left onto the big hill. And the stoplight is green and I'm getting there and I'm getting closer. Yellow red and you i'm just, not close enough went right through no, no i stayed did. i didn't did no, I, was... I watched a ton of people oh. just go right now, through the light today here's the reason why i would have no, well normally not at that light i never will run that light only because on a regular day when i get to that light and it turns green for me i count to three if not four because at least once a week someone comes blazing through that light uh four seconds late because it's so late they don't think anybody's there so i it's routinely run. So as soon as I get there, I'm like, I could gun it. I could. I'm like, you're an idiot. You know yeah, it's going to happen. And someone gonna... else is going to be coming the other direction. I'm yep. like, you're going to get T-bone. It's going to be. Yeah. So I waited and I held my breath and went, okay, here we go. Here we go. Turn the corner. And you get that. The, the car starts sliding a little bit back and forth. You can feel it lift a little bit on the snow. And you're like, okay, we can do this. We can do this. And we get there and it just starts climbing and just keeps climbing and just keeps climbing. I'm like, yeah. You have that little ge cheer in your heart. You're like, come on, come on. I'm going to make yeah, it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. But yeah, I chose poorly. I should not have done the bigger hill today, but I made it. And there were two cars on that hill that were stalled out on the side. Oh, boy. Yeah. Now, one had flashers on. It had been abandoned for a little while. The other one seemed to be so relatively new, but I didn't see the person in there. But yeah, yeah. Our, bu our buddy 8505, they're there for snow removal, but they're just pushing slush around right now. Wow. That, Interesting. That was weird last night. I came out of, uh, I was doing um, trivia uh, over at Dry Dock. Uh, Hamden and Chambers, and it is bone dry when I show up. It is sunny. It is a nice yeah, little right. evening. I it's load yeah, load all the equipment in, and then I turn around. Oh, it's raining. Okay, I guess the storm's coming. Turn around. Get about uh, five, six minutes from uh, game time, and boom! It's lightning and thunder it, right above us. You like, know, wow. I, I think always about yeah in, in these circumstances what it was like for generations that didn't have weather reports i do that too <laughs> right so like yesterday so cool. you're like wow spring is here yes this is go great we got a nice day the yeah. sun's out and then and then you wake up to this yes i i think about that all the time especially i think about um you know people that are coming across going west going through different states and yeah. how you hit these different weather patterns <laughs> and you wouldn't know them because you're not from there and you're not familiar and i always I'm, I'm glad you do that too because i thought i was just a well i know i'm a weirdo but i thought it was just one of the weird things i was doing was i imagine all the time the early settlers yeah, in denver what, what dude, are they going through yes and like what would you do exactly where would you yes. go what, what, yeah possibly you'd sit there and go and, and you know and and it, it storms like this and it's in the spring and you think it's planting season everything's gonna go well we yep. get the storm and you know there are conversations inside the homestead of, oh, yeah, smart idea, huh? Yeah, move out to the West, she says. <laughs> yes, yeah. Land, going to be able to, it's going to be much better than New York and Chicago. <laughs> yeah, this is great. How about this, Mr. Smarty Pants? <laughs> you know that conversation went on. <laughs> yeah. That is hilarious, too. We are kindred spirits. <laughs> yes, like that. that is so cool. So take your time out there. If you don't have to go out, don't. And I give all the credit to those that canceled school, canceled government. Yeah. Uh, this is a bad day, and it's going to get worse all day. So stay inside while you can and listen to 710K in US. Let's check in with the news with Blake Olson. Good morning, Blake. Morning. Hey, guys. I think about that stuff all the time as well. You do. Hey, oh, I like man. that. Yeah, it's pretty cool, actually, when you think about it. Now, Glad you, know, you guys should... made it in. Oh, we What's appreciate that? it. Yeah, it's, it sounds there that you're like rubbing in the fact that you could do this from home. I think you're mocking us. <laughs> the greatest thing us about the pandemic, learning to work from home. That is. that. If there's any positive <laughs> that came out of it, that's the positive. If there's that's anything the we can one. take, that is the one. I appreciate this, sir. All right, <laughs> you, what's going on in this? You, you are correct. 31 in Denver as you wake up to snow this morning. The sounds you hear are snow plows. The 710 five-day forecast is coming up. Our top story. We are getting ready to deploy the maximum number of uh, snow plow responses that we ever have available in the city. We'll be running them around the clock. So we have personnel who will do an overnight shift. Then we'll have the next team come in and do the day shift. And so they will be running constantly. Denver Mayor Mike Johnston, the Denver area facing its worst snowstorm in over three years. The Mile High City is expected to receive upwards of a foot of snow today. Boulder potentially seeing more. Delays and cancellations are expected at DIA. Over 800 flights have been canceled. I-70 uh, westbound uh, and eastbound in the mountains closed, of course. Highway 119 closed. Uh, U.S. 6 
Highway 4 also closed. Uh, don't drive unless you have to. You just heard Jeff and Bill talking about that. Expecting some power lines and branches down this morning. Excel says power outages could occur at any time. 165 crews will be out today. Excel's Andrew Holder. We have our crews ready to go. We have materials ready to go. We'll, we'll get power restored as safely and as efficiently as possible. Colorado's Lauren Bobert called Ken Buck's decision to resign early week sauce. She announced Wednesday that she would not be resigning to run in the special election to fill his seat. Buck is going to cost taxpayers more money and confusion with this decision. This threatens Bobert's chances of winning CD4. House Speaker Mike Johnson says that the House will apply every amount of pressure on the Senate to get the bill banning TikTok passed. Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin said the current ownership structure is a threat to national security. I think the world we all want to live in is one in which ByteDance divests from TikTok and TikTok can continue under different ownership. The possibility of CCP interference and control of the algorithm is what we're trying to address with this bill. ByteDance would have to sell the app within 180 days. Kamala Harris will make history today when she becomes the first VP to visit an abortion clinic while in office. What an accomplishment. SpaceX tries to launch the latest prototype of its Starship moon rocket today, and Boulder County and the town of Superior suing neighboring Jefferson County over concerns at the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport. The lawsuit demands an end to touch and go training flights in which pl pilots repeatedly take off from the airport and circle nearby without stopping. All 10 gray wolves released in the state are still here. The Colorado Parks and Wildlife gave the update on Wednesday saying the animals are moving around but have mostly stayed near where they were released in December. What's more, they have not preyed on any livestock yet. CPW has a map to track their move movements on its website. News brought to you by Lair Fireplace and Patio, Denver's premier source for everything fireplace, patio, and grills. Locally owned and operated since 1954. Online at LairFireplacePatio.com. 28 in Broomfield, 29 in Centennial, 31 and plenty of snow. Dangerous out on the roads this morning. The Nuggets over the heat, 188. They've won four straight. CSU over San Jose State in the Mountain West Conference Tourney uh, on Wednesday. They take on Nevada tonight. CU versus Utah this evening in the Pac-12 Tourney. The Avs over the Canucks, 4-3 to three in overtime. The release of Russell Wilson will cost the Broncos $54 million, and Billy's happy about that. Jeff and Billy have I'd their love, snow gear I'd on. love to make a $54 million <laughs> mistake. Holy right? cow. Oh, and yeah. that's not even the entire yeah. cost that's why i never ever feel bad for a professional <laughs> athletes now is never. it is it kind of a uh do you think that russ is trying to put a finger in our eye with the broncos based on a steelers contract blake oh absolutely yeah i would i mean i would too. in that yeah. situation yeah because he, would too. he doesn't I need mean, the money he knows broncos have to pay him so he can yeah. take minimum league minimum from the steelers and then force the broncos to pay him which is just uh you know what? Yeah. When you're when you're a competitive athlete like that, I mean, you want to stick it to everyone who who uh, closes the door. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm curious I to mean, see what he does in, in the Steel Town. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, I, I would not be shocked if they if they have a winning season. I it's really things, would. For me, it, I always thought it, and you've talked about it. Uh, offensive line play that that was yeah, a huge it's problem all about here. the offensive line. Yeah, there's no question, especially to me, especially with him as he ages. Oh uh, yeah. So, you know, there, there's no question. He tried to be a pocket passer here for the most part at times. And you saw how it just, you know, it just, uh, yeah, know, it didn't work. Blew up in their face. Yeah. It's no just, doubt. that's not what he does. Because, well, part yeah. of it, you know, this, because, you know, you and I are short guys. You can't see your blind. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. a huge problem. Absolutely. It's an enormous no, there, problem. There, there, there's no question. Now, the way they play football now, I mean, it really is. 
it's more of an option to attack out of a shotgun because he's reading the uh, outside yeah. linebacker or the defensive end. So, I mean, it's conducive to what he's able to do. But at his age, man, if he if he doesn't push back on the Twinkies, man, it's it's not it's, it's not oh, going to yeah. last for too long. But I I wouldn't be shocked if it, if you know if they're better than they were the Steelers, yeah, uh, than last season. So we'll see. All right, see. guys, have fun. It's going to be a great show today. Thankfully, everyone's inside. Uh, hopefully and not on the roads blake are, and if you careful. if you're listening on radio you can't see this but blake is wearing his beanie he's, oh he's you know terrible. what i forgot about that i forgot i had this thing on I got, oh that's great I'll, I'll take it off and i'll have hat hair okay. <laughs> it's great hat man hair time you guys were you out shoveling you. is that or you know, you... i was as a matter of fact but you know what i went outside and there was nothing nothing on the streets in larimer county that's I mean, what it seems snow like. and, wow yeah so it's it's beautiful up here. We got palm trees and you know people uh, out jogging and everything in Fort Collins, Timnath area. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's incredible the the snow up here. I, I mean Denver has been getting hit hard. Yeah, yeah, all season long. But you know I, I haven't experienced a lot up here. But that's uh, all right. You could take our water later. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> right have, have Everybody else we'll does. Talk, yeah, everyone else does, no doubt. We'll talk to you in about 20 minutes. Blake Olson, right. News Talk 710, KNUS. Want to take your favorite radio station wherever you go? Now there's an app for that. No matter where you are, stream your favorite shows. Tap the app to listen to podcasts. Text message your favorite local hosts. Call the show. Get the latest headlines and enter contests to win prizes. All in the palm of your hand. Available now for iOS and Android devices in the App Store or Google Play. And best of all, it's free. Download today. All right, looking at Colorado road conditions, uh, if you go to cotrip.org, cotrip.org, you can pull up uh, kind of road conditions as they're updated, and there's a lot of red, which tells you a lot of road closures, especially going up into the mountains. I just, uh, Colorado nine, nine, uh, 9 southbound closed, US 6 eastbound closed, I-70 eastbound closed, US 285 southbound closed, I 70 westbound uh, closed. So, US 40 in both directions, road closed. US 285 in both directions, road closed. Even portions of I 70 eastbound up in the mountains are closed. So, it's Jeez. one of those days. They were right, right to cancel. I, we were, and I've been critical in the past of this kind of rush to cancel. They were right to cancel all this stuff today. They're going to save some lives by keeping people off the roads. Yeah, yeah, they will. It, it seemed like uh, wrong yesterday afternoon and early evening, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, yeah, trust it the science sometimes, up. right? Yeah, all of a sudden it showed up. And that was crazy because I told you I was at the bar, and by the time I get out after doing trivia last night, it, it's the wet, slushy snow. And so yep. it was heavy, and, and it was a lot of water that was in the parking lot, and I did not have the right shoes. So someone came home with wet socks. Yeah, because my shoes were wet. Because I was surprised how much <laughs> snow and slush was out there. That's crazy. So it's really, really heavy as well. So shoveling, snow blowing, it's going to be a problem. And you watch your snow blower. You may have to be careful and clean it out a little bit because if you have a smaller one or the blades aren't large enough, uh, it's going to get stuck yep. lifting this heavy, heavy snow. There's yep. so much moisture in it. It is ridiculous. It's great. Oh, it's Great, wonderful for we us. Need, yeah, we, we need it. That water is going to be wonderful. But yeah, if you look at coloradotrip.org, most of the closures are kind of around the Keystone, Western Slope, uh, just west of, of Denver. That's where most of the closures yeah. are. And then you get Blake and you get some texters here that are telling us that, um, you know, they're not getting a ton of snow where they are. Yeah, so, which is strange because normally you get the Fort Collins area because of where the Commerce mountains City. sit there. You have a lot of snow sets up. They get right. a little, it, it's a little more accumulation there than normal. Wild. Send us your text messages. I'd love yeah. to see them. Unlike Kyle Clark, I'm happy to take <laughs> and look at pictures of your patio furniture. Yeah, we'd love to see the patio furniture pictures. <laughs> so text them in on the 710 KNUS app and we'll do live 
kind of weather reporting from around the state. Yeah, That'd be kind of like fun. Where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971. I was thinking about this when we were talking about cars earlier. My first car that I got yeah. from my parents when I turned 16 was a 1982 Nissan Datsun. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And you those. shifted into four wheel drive on the floor. And we used to go skiing in Loveland. Yeah. And I had uh, kicked off the speaker on the door side, okay. trying to put on a ski boot one time. Oh, God. Okay. So it the only speaker that worked was on the other side. Oh, geez. And it was a, uh, a four cylinder, like, slow car so yeah. i was the guy in the right lane oh geez putting along with my blinkers on going about 10 miles an hour up eisenhower tunnel but oh wow that was fun Jeez. those were the fun days of skiing yeah I, I i uh my first car was the car that was the it was the utility car for the family that we had to move we had our dog and some other stuff and to get things up and down the mountains and stuff uh it was a volvo station wagon so you know i was getting all the chicks because that that's what they look for is safety security in a station wagon like, yeah did maybe. it have the seats that faced backwards uh no that one did no. not we had them later okay. that's yeah that did but did it did you? not really? i wish yeah i wish we had I, I, but i, I did <laughs> i think uh, i could not tell my parents this at the time i think i got god is it 18 kids in the car at one point Yes, you told yeah. that story. Yeah, that I think was it's great. 18. Yeah, I think it is. We were going to that we were going to soccer practice. But yeah, that was a wonderful car. But again, it was it was big and it was safe, uh, not too sexy. Worked really well though, as far as getting up and down. It was great in the snow too, because of the heaviness. Of yeah, it. it was heavy worked. enough that it worked really well. Didn't have the four-wheel drive, but again, Volvo. So it, it kind of dealt with the weather fairly well. So, so speaking of snow, yeah. there's different levels of skiing that you may not know about here in the state of Colorado. Yeah. Um, those that grow, those of us that grow up here do know. Okay. So you have the elite level, right? The, yeah. the veil, the Beaver creeks The I'm going to go stay Aspen, in the Ritz Carlton, yeah. yep. the Aspen. I'm going to go ski at that level. Then you have the kind of mid level, the, the Breckenridge Keystone, great skiing experience, that type. Yeah. And then, Winter Park, stuff like that. Yeah. And then you have those that just love to ski and they don't want to pay a lot so yeah. loveland right we're gonna a basin we're yeah. gonna get up Eldora. there we're gonna have fun yeah and we're not gonna pay a ton but we love to be outside then there's another level and i ran into this Ooh. i had never known this even existed yeah I it was the loveland pass ski people oh, that yeah. trade out joints for people to give them rides to the top yeah of loveland ski pass and then they can ski and snowboard down yeah. so there's no lifts you ride no. in the back of a pickup truck and you get rides by giving the person a little uh a little split yeah. they say yeah uh we uh those I are the that. real those are the kids that really love skiing <laughs> um i had a i had a kid in high school that was a ridiculous ski bum really really good um really really talented and there were two occasions that i did go up with him and he said yeah we're gonna go skiing because we're not going to the one of the the uh resorts or anything I'm like wait, 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 what and it was we went up and it was part of birthed and yeah. we would go into <laughs> yeah, the back country right. with birthed and then what you do is you get in the back country and you'd come down in certain areas of birthed complete no track no trails no anything right. and then you end up down near the highway and then you hitchhike, hitchhike back, back, up. back yeah, up. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right did that did that for there were two different weekends did that yeah it was a lot of fun but you, it's a lot, it's a lot of work because it's not groomed. It is fun, but it is a lot of work. And there's you're, no guarantee you're no, getting back up. And you are exhausted um, <laughs> at the end of the day. I've never been more tired uh, just on that one. Cause it is it deep, heavy snow. It's beautiful, but wow. Yeah. And I, and that was actually young and in shape. So imagine that. Yeah. That was that. Oh boy. Those are fun days though. <laughs> I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of skiing adventures. Those days where you're like, I can't feel my toes. Yes, I can't feel my 100%. fingers. Yeah. Oh. Those were fun days. Oh, those are fun days. Uh, on today's show, we've got Jerry Sonnenberg in the seven o'clock hour. We're going to ask him about both the special election now that Ken Buck is out. Is he going to be vying for that as well as the, the primary and the general election? Can you believe there are three elections tied with one congressional seat because Ken Buck decided not to complete yeah. his race? There's going to be a special election in June. Likely the same day, a primary election and then a general election in November. If you're confused, don't worry. The rest of us are as well. It definitely makes things uh, crazy. We're going to talk to Jerry Sonnenberg. He's running for that seat in the seven o'clock hour. And then Brandon Straka, the founder of the walkaway campaign, 
encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat Party is going to join us in the nine o'clock hour. So perfect day while you're at home to be able to listen, catch up on the news, all the news, all the breaking news and the analysis that you want is going to be happening on this show this morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And that and then you got Charlie Kirk afterwards. So this is the place to be 710 KNUS this morning. Get all the news. Lyman, not a single snowflake. What? Not a single snowflake. 2136. Uh, Thanks for the text well, on that. If you want, we'll send you some. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I got buckets of it. <laughs> uh, our buddy Corey Nelson texted uh, Parker's Hilltop area, which is where near where I live yeah. as well. I mean, it is thick out there. That is gorgeous, though. It, it looks, I saw the picture. Great Beautiful. picture. Yeah. Send us pictures. I don't want to shovel that stuff. Up, uh, no. To the 710K in US app or give us a call 303 696. Let us know how the snow's uh, fallen in your area. Yeah, We'd love we to have. hear it. Uh, imagine effortlessly gliding open your cabinets and drawers to reveal neatly arranged shelves that showcase your belongings. With roll out shelves, you'll easily access your pots, pans, and other essentials, eliminating chaos and increasing speed and functionality in your home. roll out shelves understands that every home's storage needs are unique. Whether you're dealing with tight corners or expansive cabinets, your shelves will be custom built to maximize every inch of available space. Joyce and Brent Tolliver, the mom and son dynamic duo, leave satisfied customers wherever they go, and their all five-star reviews confirm this. Here's what some overjoyed customers are saying. Joyce replied to my initial email and scheduled the estimate quickly. Installation was quick and clean. The shelves are very sturdy and made better than most I've seen. Very, very happy customer. I've had I've put this off for so long thinking it was going to be so much more expensive. It wasn't life changing. Begin the affordable transformation in your home for less than a thousand dollars. When roll them out shelves efficiently organizes your space with sturdy Baltic birch shelves built right here in Colorado and guaranteed for life. Call for your free in-home estimate today. 303-475-9601. That's 303-475-9601 or RollEmOutShelves.com. Tell them Jeff sent you. RollEmOutShelves.com. Great thing to do this morning while you're enjoying a cup of coffee. Go to RollEmOutShelves.com. All right, we'll get to your calls and texts. And in the 7 o'clock hour, Jerry Sonnenberg, you're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS.
It's a snowy day in Denver. Good morning, everybody. This is the Jeff and Bill Show, encouraging you to stay home unless you have to be out there. Those of us that have drove in, uh, Parker Road was a mess. Probably at least a dozen Priuses and so many uh, cars like that all in the ditch. Um, You got to have four wheel drive and high clearance, otherwise you're gonna. I I see you, Mister Mustang. We talked about it earlier. (laughs) Driving in front of me, I I salute you, but I question your decision making. I know. Yeah. I know. Wow. Uh, You know, and and I did see one California license plate out there struggling. (laughs) I'm like, welcome to Colorado. Yeah. It's like you're gonna be calling your friends. (laughs) This state sucks. What's going on here? (laughs) Uh, Dwayne from Divide, Colorado's on the line. Uh, Divide's where I down near Colorado. Springs. I, I go down there to get my Christmas trees with the kids. We we walk around the forest there near Woodland Park and Divide, and it's beautiful. How's it down there? You sissies. <laughs> Absolute sissies. <laughs> well, how much snow you got up there, Dwayne? Well, first of all, two things, gentlemen. Today is 314. Yeah, it is pie, pie day. day. Yeah. Yes. And I was stupid enough to get ingredients to make a pie. Ooh. The child is home because there's no school. So now I'm baking all day today, which will be fine. <laughs> what kind of pie are we but making? Or I'm curious. Well, I've got, uh, well, I've got uh, three choices. I'm doing an apple cherry Ooh. and I'll be doing a chocolate pudding. And then I'll be doing a uh, uh, gooseberries and uh, strawberry combination. Nice. So I if I'm going to bake. I, I got to heat the house now because the new <laughs> thermostat I just put in. Yeah blew the circuit almost out oh, of the pan. No. So I'm living on the heat of the oven only in the fireplace. No. Oh, that's oh, awful. Yes. I got a ask question. Well, um, homemade pie crust or pre-made pie crust? Excuse me. I'm, I'm asking. I want to know, who, you know what, how, what your level is. I'm sorry. I, I have been on the Iron Chef on tv twice Ex- i did not you're know asking that. me really yes. well, well if you read my imdb gentlemen you'd be going dang he's somebody <laughs> well the thing is he's i just want to know stuff. i, I want to know about you know, the level here because you're doing the three different pies and again i appreciate because those are three different executions of pies so i knew you already knew your stuff i'm just curious if we're going to do the easy way if we're going the hard way okay so oh, you're doing the pie crust um, I want to know, do you do just a, a regular top or do a lattice top? Do we have any designs on the top? How do you, how do you present this thing? It depends. I do a lattice top because yeah. I'm bored or I just do a quick one, cut the little holes in and go from there. Oh, awesome. But each one of the pie crusts is also seasoned to the rest of it. So it helps Ooh. out. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Okay. Now, uh, now you and I, we talk, we talk off air sometimes. I, I'd love to mm-hmm. see pictures and hear about this. Cause I want to, cause, uh, I want to encourage my, my daughters are getting into a lot of baking and doing it. So I want to show them the standard. I want to help you help me out here. I'm going to say this dude been on Iron Chef. Let me see, man. Oh, I appreciate you. All right. Talk to us about the mm-hmm. snow. Okay. Well, first of all, it's as black as my ex-wife's heart outside. <laughs> there is no sunlight. No. Absolutely yeah. no sunlight. So you won't be getting any pictures from outside. But I went to bed last night at 1030 and there was an inch and a half on the deck. And the hardest part about trying to stay warm or stay cold when you're sleeping, as you well know, yeah. is it too much blanket? And then you're like, no, no, this is comfortable. Oh, yeah. and then you're waking up half an hour later going, it's hot. It's hot. Yes. yes and it's going awful. back and forth. Yeah. So I'm, ba- I'm back and forth. And of course, I'm an old man. So I can only sleep in a chair, apparently, more than I can a very comfortable air mattress. Uh-huh. So back and forth. So I started last night again, two inches on the deck. Ha, ha, ha. No big deal. Congratulations. Yeah. No again. 10 30, 11 30. I wake up. I look out four inches. Nah, still good. Yeah. Yeah. 2 30, nine inches. Ooh. Uh-oh. And then I just looked out about 20 seconds before I called you guys. Yeah. 19 inches. <laughs> oh, I think God's Lyman, trying to teach you a lesson. Lyman has not even a snowflake yet, and you've got 19 inches. Jeez. God's mad at you. Uh, what, Lyman can suck it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's what it I tastes him. like a Lyman. <laughs> I mean, snow is out there oh, to fantastic. no end. Now, now the uh, electricity is popping in and out, so maybe I won't be uh, baking today, but we'll see. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, but yeah, just, just so you guys out there know, the guy in the Mustang, yeah. either absolute, absolute out of his mind gearhead or somebody who was so desperate to get into the office to find out it's locked up tighter than Fort Knox because what idiot would go out in this exactly. weather right now? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly, That's exactly right. what I was thinking. Behind him. I'm sitting, I'm driving behind this dude in the Mustang going, either you know exactly what you're doing or you don't have a clue. There's nothing in between. Right. You are either right. the smartest guy on the road or the dumbest guy on the road. I don't know which <laughs> one it is. And so, but I gave them enough uh, breadth. I stayed far enough behind to let them show oh, me yes. whichever one it is, just in case, just in case. 
I'm surprised that none of you crashed out at the uh, station beforehand. It got a little dicey. Yeah. The, we used I mean, to do you know, that. Yeah. They used to do that back yeah. in the day, but, uh, you know, if I, if, I, I mean, if I can avoid that. There was a time back about, I don't know what it was, uh, 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I lived a mile from the station that I worked at, but, I, you know, I could trudge back and forth, but nobody else could get in. And for three days, it was only the bare minimum high school kids and interns oh, that were geez. doing all the work. Oh, and no. of course, having the one boss who sat there and said, all right, I want you to turn on the <laughs> I S D. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's not the ISDN. That's not the ISDN. What? <laughs> it's not the ISDN. Yeah. Can you and go check? Like, yeah. No, no. And he, he's, he's like, they're, they're you're tell- the oldest one in the room. Yeah. It's and- the I S D. And... Yeah, and then then he's talking to you, saying, "Yeah, but but are the pots lines going down?" And he's like, "I, I didn't bring any of that stuff with me today. I don't smoke while I'm at work." Like, I was like, "No, that's not oh, it. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's not it at mm-hmm. all." Oh, all the fun and thrills. But yes, <laughs> oh, yes, so far 19 inches, and now the wind's blowing. Oh, that'll make it more. So fun. that'll be even more fun. Yeah, because that was, I'm waiting for the. That was that was what I felt dealt with. I when I called my wife on the way in, I just said, "It's the wind." I mean, it really is blowing the car to the side of the road. That means the mother in law is coming into town. <laughs> There's usually some sort of massive kind of death and destruction coming in. Well, uh, there's another six to 10 inches expected. I mean, it is geez. wild uh, between now and uh, midnight today. I think it's going to snow all day today. Let us know what it's like where you are, Dwayne. I appreciate the call, yeah, Dwayne, thanks, man. in Divide, I'll Colorado. I'm hungry. Man. I know. I got a, got a really nice peach pie in the fridge. Jeez, you yeah. I got I to get my daughters to cook something or bake something they, they bake i can cook i cannot bake i'm awful at it you know i i suck making uh, pancakes how hard is that i mean i can make really nice yeah. food you get into the baking realm of stuff that and rice That's i can't make rice yeah i cannot bake at all i'm awful at it um, uh, i can't make rice either that's as the other of weird thing 5 45 this morning no snow in burlington back to bed Jeez, man. Uh, my wife, tongue in cheek, texted me just a little bit. Hey, honey, do you know it's snowing outside? <laughs> she had a laughing emoji. I'm like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, because she has the day off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to get to Jerry Sonnenberg in the seven o'clock hour. And then we've got uh, you choose the news coming up here. But I wanted to make sure you all saw this. Uh, U.S. Rep. Lauren Boebert blasts Ken Buck's resignations, says she will st- Skip the special election to focus on the primary race. That's interesting. So U.S. Representative Lauren Boebert will not seek the Republican nomination for the special election to replace resigning Congressman Ken Buck, she said Wednesday, putting her focus on winning the GOP primary instead. Boebert, who now represents Colorado's third congressional district, announced at the end of the year that she would run to replace retiring Ken Buck, a fellow Republican in the more conservative fourth congressional district. He had planned to finish out his term. But on Tuesday, announced that he now intends to step down next week on March 22nd, a move that triggered a June 25th special election to fill a seat. It's set for the same day as the state's congressional primaries, throwing further uncertainty into what was already a crowded race for uh, the rare open congressional seat. Several candidates were still weighing their options. This was Boebert yesterday. The establishment concocted a swampy backroom deal. Let me read that again. The establishment concocted a swampy backroom deal to try to rig an election. I'm winning by 25 points, Bobert said in a statement, citing a late February poll that shows that she's winning, forcing an unnecessary special election on the same day as the primary election will confuse voters, resulting in a lame duck congressman on day one and leave the fourth district with no representation for more than three months, the fourth district deserves better. So uh, we'll get into all this. How does this make you feel about Congressional District 4? This is where most of our listeners live. Not all of them, but a yeah. lot of them live. Uh, how do you feel about Lauren Boebert? Are you going to support her? Uh, Jerry Sonnenberg is going to, I think, seek that special election. Deborah Flora, Ted Harvey, a lot of folks. If, so, you, if you don't have a last name of Bobert, you better seek that special election that's spot exactly because right. it's the that's only exactly way right. you're going to get to name recognition. It's the only way you have a shot at getting close to the same recognition that exactly Bobert has. Right. Yeah, exactly you right. Got to be in. So uh, let us know how you think about this race and how it's shaping up. It is confusing, and hopefully Jerry Sonberg can provide a little bit of insight 
in the seven o'clock hour. We have coming up here just in a second. You choose the news. Want to connect with the guys out there. Guys, generally, we talk about medicine and effective treatments for erectile dysfunction and other men's sexual health issues. Today, I want to talk about love. The one you love is the light of your life. And if you're like most men, you want to do whatever you can to nurture your relationship. But if you're suffering with ED, you know the impacts the condition is likely having on you and on your partner. Rocky Mountains Men's Clinic has served the front range of Colorado for nearly a decade and has successfully treated tens of thousands of men. Schedule a consult with Rocky Mountain Men's Clinic today. Your initial visit is only $99 and includes a medical consult with a licensed medical provider, a T and PSA test, and if medically advised, a test dose. And if the test dose doesn't work in the office, your visit is free. They have five locations in Colorado, Fort Collins, North Denver, Central Denver, Castle Rock, and Colorado Springs. Stop dealing with the lack of confidence that ED brings. Call them today at 720-440-7900. That's 720-440-7900. Or visit RockyMountainMensClinic.com. That's RockyMountainMensClinic.com. We'll get to uh, You Choose the News and Blake Olson up next. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, KNUS.
It's one of those spring days in Denver, Colorado, where the snow has fallen and yeah. kids are staying home. The government is not open today in the state capitol, thank God. But all the bars are open. <laughs> right. That's right. As Peter Boris always pointed out. It's a better never use get of a your call. time. Yes, never got a it's call a from a bar saying, sorry, we're closed. <laughs> I just appreciate that our freedoms aren't being restricted today yeah, with useless nice. laws. <laughs> Uh, let's go to uh, you choose the news, Bill. All righty. Yes, sir. Uh, despite all the cards and letters, we are still going to play everybody's favorite fake radio news game show. You choose the news. Yes, we have scoured the interwebs this morning after we got through the snow to find really, really dumb stories about us humans, giving them even more ridiculous headlines to play this fake radio news game. Because as per usual, those in charge are not awake at this hour. No, the alarm doesn't go off until 7, so we have a tiny window of time in order to be absolutely ridiculous. And if you know us, we are definitely going to take advantage of that. All righty, sir. Blake Olson will be joining us from the newsroom as well. Here are your choices, gentlemen. Headline number one, forget schools. Your coworkers can now identify as animals. Headline number two, if only we had a clue. Headline number three, why couldn't he just walk? And headline number four, the ranch of Dr. Moreau. All righty, Mr. Hunt, choose carefully. <laughs> Let's go with your coworkers can now be animals. Yes, forget schools. Your coworkers I work with one can already. now. <laughs> I appreciate that. I accept that. <laughs> uh, your coworkers can now identify as animals. Yes, this is it from the Richmond Wildlife Center. They shared a video recently of Melissa Stanley, who is now identifying as a red fox. Why? Well, recently they found an abandoned baby red fox, but they didn't want to expose it to humans. So in order to provide care and the nourishment that it needs, they went and bought a fox costume. So uh, several times a day, Melissa dresses up and pretends to be a fox and takes care of this orphaned little animal. They said they got the idea from a wildlife sanctuary in China back in 2022, where workers were dressed in panda outfits and smeared themselves with uh, bear feces and urine to erase the memory of human contact. Uh, Melissa did not say if she was going as far to start smearing herself <laughs> with excrement. But again, we all have goals and choices. So, yeah, <laughs> I know. All righty. Uh, second choice, sir. If only we had a clue, why couldn't he just walk or the ranch of Dr. Moreau? Let's go with the ranch. The ranch of Dr. Moreau. I love the fact that our rancher chose the ranch story. An 80-year-old man in Montana has pleaded guilty to felony wildlife crimes because of his plan to let paying customers hunt sheep on his private ranch. What's wrong with hunting sheep? I know. What would be wrong with hunting sheep? And that's what Arthur Jack Sharboff, 80 years old, who owns and operates the ranch, wants to know. He is in Vaughn, Montana, and he started this ranch in 2013 as a place for people to come and hunt his, quote, alternative livestock. Yes. How is it alternative? He has hybrids of mountain sheep, mountain goats, and other large mammals. The problem is these sheep that he was having people hunt are massive hybrids that are technically illegal. Oh, interesting. What happened in 2013 is an unnamed accomplice of him uh, brought in biological tissues from the Marco Polo sheep from uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, basically, um, it's the largest sheep in the world. How big are these sheep? The average male can weigh over 300 pounds. No their, way. their horns are over. What are over, they called? Uh, they are Marco Polo sheep, and their horns are over five feet wide. They have the largest sheep horns on the planet. They are endangered and are protected. Huge. Yeah. So what he had done is he created hybrid monster sheep <laughs> on his <laughs> on his ranch and was having people come and uh, and hunt them. And he, so they said, no, 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 especially because they're using the uh, the endangered DNA. But yeah. Uh, he smuggled in the DNA and then, yeah, bred these giant, massive uh, sheep for people to come out and hunt. You know, in a state, in a country where you got people pouring fentanyl over the border, yeah. this seems like I know of maybe all the something that's not shouldn't yeah. be such a high priority. Exactly, of all the things we're going after. And speaking of going after, Blake Olson from the newsroom is going to be going after our final story this morning. All right, Blake, if right. we only had a clue, or why couldn't he just walk? What's your choice? Uh, why couldn't he just walk, Bill, for yeah. 300 Why couldn't he just walk? That's what the police in DeSoto, Texas, want to know. They recently cited Damian Hoodland for walking down the road where there wasn't a sidewalk. They said, you cannot be going down the road in the middle of traffic. You must be over on the grass or the mud. And, and then Damian pointed out to them that uh, well, I can't do that because technically I can't walk. 
Uh, Damon was born with spina bifida. Uh, He lost one of his legs to a bone infection in 2015 and is permanently confined to a wheelchair. Recently, he was leaving 7-Eleven along Wintergreen Road, headed home, and that's when the officer stopped him. Uh, Said, you you can't go down the middle of the road, sir. And uh, Damien said, "Uh, sir, could could you point me to where the sidewalk is? And there is no sidewalk. Uh, So (laughs) they they just basically said, well, I understand. But he gave him a a warning citation and said, the next time I see you in the road, I'm going to ticket you. And he's going, there's not another option here. And part of it was it had just rained. And in order for him to navigate, he would have been in the mud and the and the grass. And he's like, there's no way. So, uh, yeah, he's talking about that. He may actually be a scuffler. He could be arrested. He could be a routine violator of crime. He could go on a crime spree simply because he can't walk. Which just Here's what the police officer should have done. Yeah. Pulled up next to him said, hey, why don't you jump in the car? Yeah. We'll put the wheelchair in the back. Yeah. I'll take you where you need to yeah. go. Yeah. Well, the thing is, he did offer him a ride. He did. He did? But he still gave, and, and he said, he's, uh, David said, I'm on like two blocks away from the house. But he's like, okay, I understand. Here's your citation. No Again, way. that's the part. Is oh, He did offer the ride, but he still cited, cited him. <laughs> You're like, Barney! Yes, I know. It's just ridiculous. Oh, well, that is it. That is the end of You Choose the News. As always, I'm a giant loser, but both Jeff and Blake are huge winners today. I appreciate Blake for playing along. And as always, this is definitely not sponsored nor associated with Rolling Out Shelves in any way, shape, or form. They're a wonderful mother-son company. They will come to your home for free. They'll give you an estimate and organize your kitchen, your bath, your garage, the laundry room. They'll make everything easier. You'll find the dark corners of those cabinets you've never seen before. Everything will be at your fingertips, but do not tell them you heard about it on You Choose the News. They love 710K in US. This, this particular segment, eh, not so much. Not a huge <laughs> fan, but we appreciate them. We love them dearly. So go see rollemoutshelves.com today. They'll give you a free estimate. Jeff's going to talk to us later about his experience with Rollemout Shelves. Yep. That's all I got, sir. Back to you. Let's... Uh, Go back to the regularly scheduled portion of the program. Well, uh, coming up in just a few minutes is going to be Jerry Sonnenberg. As you know, Jerry uh, is running for Congressional District 4, has a storied career in Colorado, served as a state senator, and uh, we'll dive into his background and why he thinks he's best to represent CD4. So you're not going to want to miss that. His website's SonnenbergForCongress.com. Sonnenbergforcongress.com. So 7 o'clock hour, Jerry Sonnenberg, and then 9 o'clock hour, Brandon Straka, who was the founder of the Walk Away campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat Party. Yeah. His work in this upcoming election and whether Where, or not... He, where'd they go? I mean, do, right. do their families miss them? Do they get Christmas cards? What happened to them? I'm very curious. <laughs> so uh, all that and more coming up here. You're not going to want to miss that conversation. And if you have questions for Jerry Sonnenberg, You want to ask him directly, give us a call, 303-696-1971. That's 303-696-1971. Or text us on the 710K News app. I should should do this at somewhere on the time, but how are the puppies? We had three yesterday. Three? No way. Oh, now I know we had a a girl early. Um, A boy boy? and another girl. Yay. Oh, congratulations. Um, So that's that's exciting. During the previous litter with one of our other dogs, we had nine. So three is interesting. That is. Everybody's doing okay, including mom? Yes, they are. My wife did a a fantastic job. Did not leave that dog's side for about 24 hours. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah, thanks for checking in. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS.
7 a.m. in the Mile High City, and the snow is falling. Hopefully, you are staying warm out there. Yeah, we're getting and pictures. not having to drive in. We're getting pictures from folks. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, Blake. Yeah, or uh, Bill. Yeah, there was someone there sent us a, a picture of Canyon City, and I'm like, hey, there's a no snow, and I have so much snow that I have to shovel, and Burlington not getting any snow. I I feel like people are taunting us. I'm, <laughs> I'm saying we probably deserve it. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that I feel like we're being taunted at this point because uh, also my wife is taunting me through text message. Uh, every couple of minutes, she'll ask me something. And then she follows up with, oh, yeah, have you heard? We have snow. <laughs> like, Thanks, babe. Appreciate you. They were Love right, you so much. right to cancel it. And, <laughs> yes, they were. Uh, look, I mean, if you go to look at coloradotrip.org, it is a, a lot of I-70 up into the mountains is closed and there's um, accidents happening out there. You got to take your time on my drive into the studio, probably about a dozen cars or so in ditches, Jeez. mostly two wheel drive. Now, you know, what's I should Texas. ask this one real quickly. What is your normal commute time and how much extra did it take you today? Uh, my normal commute time is 30 minutes yeah. and it took about 50 minutes to get in. Wow. So an extra 20 minutes. Jeez. Not bad. Mine. I'm, I'm super close. I, I'm, I live. This is the closest radio station to my house in town, which is not my plan. That, that was by accident. Um, I am maybe. Well, OK, if we're following the speed limit. Probably about 10, 11 minutes away. Yeah. Um, but I can make it in six because I've done that. <laughs> and only because uh, someone might have forgotten something very important for the show uh, when he was working with Peter Boyles and had to go home to get it very oh, no. quickly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am so lucky there were no law enforcement officers between here and the house because otherwise I would not be working. So, uh, yeah. But it takes me about that time. It took me about twice that. It took about 22 to yep. get in this morning and it was night it was slow but yeah so many cars that were just pulled over now the suvs the four-wheel drives the all-wheel drives just fine but anybody i mean yeah i saw honda we we're talking about the mustang dude yeah just not good not good but the plows are out there saw a number of plows some of them made it easy for me to get down the road <laughs> some Others. made it impossible yeah to change lanes not so much yeah not so much so uh, unless you have to be out, really don't. It, it is it is rough out there. And if you think, well, I got to get into work and I've got a two wheel drive car, you're yeah. going to spend your morning in a ditch. Yeah, don't. So I, I would avoid getting out there if you don't have to. Um, we're going to get uh, Jerry Sonnenberg up here in just a second. He's going to be uh, joining us. He's a candidate for Congressional District 4, former state rep, former state senator. And he's going to tell us why he thinks he's best to serve in this district. And we're going to dive into this detail around Ken Buck and his resignation and what that means for the race. And those of us that live in CD4 are going to get two ballots June 25th to vote for. And then you're going to vote in a general election in November. So this seat is actually going to have three elections tied to it, which is just kind of wild and crazy. But before we get to Jerry... Let's go to Blake Olson with the news and weather. Good morning, Blake. Good morning, guys. 31 and snowy, of course, in Denver. Stay off the roads if possible. Not worth it. The 710 five-day forecast coming up. Our top story. Those snow plow plows are out there. 54 of the big ones. And then over 800 delays at DIA this morning in Colorado's largest utility is ready should the lights go out today. The storm is on track to dump, as you know, wet, heavy snow and could hurt the tree branches and power lines. Excel Energy says that that could lead to scattered power outages at any time. The company has nearly 165 employees and crew members on standby across the state to respond as quickly as possible and restore service. Excel's Andrew Holder. We have our crews ready to go. We have materials ready to go. We'll, we'll get power restored as safely and as efficiently as possible. Now, Dwayne and Divide experiencing a ton of snow. He called Jeff and Bill. You sissy. <laughs> Absolute sissy. <laughs> I just looked out about 20 seconds before I called you guys. Yeah. 19 inches. <laughs> oh. 19 inches while the storm is keeping many at home today. It means big business for the ski ro resorts, of course. Echo Mountain, which overlooks Idaho Springs, is looking to get more than three feet of fresh powder. Four others are expecting to top two feet of snow. Eldora Wolf. And the snow is apparently affecting Blake Olson up in the newsroom there. 
We'll see if we can get Blake back here in just a second. Can you hear me? We got you now, Blake. Yep, go All ahead. Right. Well, sorry about that. It's seven oh four. So tomorrow, once again, we gotta. I think we're gonna have to wait till seven oh five. All right, Kamala Harris is going to do something that no other sitting vice president has ever done. Today, she's going to visit an abortion clinic, one of the priorities of the Biden administration. I think this. Abortion. I think that's going to start to backfire on him. I think so too. I mean, it's it. Most people are not like. Yay, abortion! You know, it's yeah. it's not a, it's it's a thing they that don't they, want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it, and I think yeah. people go, you know, I, I I may not agree with it. I'm not sure I want it off the table, mm -hmm. but going to celebrate it, right. this like shout your abortion stuff they do. I don't. I think that's too far. Well, man. I I I think it's going. I think it can be a winning um message for the Democrats. Uh, and I think, and I think right, it can but be it, but used it, but that way. There, like Blake and I were just saying, there, there's a most people I don't think are in the kind of celebratory aspect of abortion, right? Even in Colorado. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's. But I think also it's the idea of, uh, again, it's a it's a personal choice that women had for decades, and then they in some areas don't have anymore. So there yeah. is that issue of, and so I understand the idea of celebrating, but I yeah. think it's I think it's strategic for kamala to be here oh, definitely. And, to, and to go not yeah. here but just to go yeah. to a, an abortion clinic because sure. and it, just in my opinion they need to counter the border argument if they focus and they make the border argument they're no gonna question. lose that argument but, if they but you could you could get into the mark uterus udall yeah scenario where mm -hmm. you're like there are so many other issues we're dealing with. Why right. do you continue to elevate this? Yeah, right. The, the, I agree. I yeah. think you have to ignore it if you're a conservative. And I, I right, think Bill? that could end up being your detriment, honestly, if you ignore yeah. the abortion issue, because then it will seem like for that portion of the population, you don't care. It is. It's a very dangerous subject, as dangerous as the border is, in my yeah. opinion, because, again, I'm not part of either party. As dangerous as the border is for Democrats, I think the abortion issue can be as dangerous for the conservatives if you do not approach it properly. But really? Uh, well, yeah. I, I but again, I, I don't can, think you talk about yeah. it. I mean, that's just me. That's yeah, fair enough. It's hey, a good point, hey, man. I got an idea. We could do a show on that. One. Uh, really? Yeah. Do you know anybody that has a show? Uh, there's, this would be great. There's going to be, you're going to have the Colorado March for Life coming up here. Believe me, it is going to be a big issue. Yes, yeah. it is. Hey, after the House approved the bill that could lead to the for sale or nationwide ban of the social media app TikTok, Speaker Mike Johnson says he will be applying every amount of pressure on the Senate to get the bill passed. Press Secretary Karine Jean Pierre. This bill would not ban apps like TikTok, period. What it would do is to ensure that ownership, as I just stated, uh, of these apps wouldn't be in the hands of those who can't exploit them or to do us harm. And Secretary of State Antony Blinken told reporters today that there is a strong proposal on the table right now for a temporary ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. He added that it's up to Hamas to take the deal and end the suffering in the region. 28 in Arvada, 29 in Aurora, 31 in Denver. Nuggets, Avs win. CSU uh, plays today. Once again, so does CU tonight against Utah in the Pac-12 tournament. Jeff and Bill, they continue on the snowy, snowy day in Denver. Blake Olson, News Talk 710, KNUS. Want to take your favorite radio station wherever you go? Now, there's an app for that. No matter where you are, stream your favorite shows. Tap the app to listen to podcasts. Text message your favorite local hosts. Call the show. Get the latest headlines and enter contests to win prizes. All in the palm of your hand. Available now for iOS and Android devices in the App Store or Google Play. And best of all, it's free. Download today. Joining us on the line is Jerry Sonnenberg. Jerry is running for Congressional District 4 here in Colorado, born in Sterling, Colorado, and graduated from Sterling High School. He attended Northeastern Junior College. 
Sonnenberg worked as a cattle rancher on his family's farm as a child and broke out on his own in 1979. He served on the Colorado Farm Bureau Board of Directors before being elected to the Colorado House of Representatives from the 65th District. At the time of his election in 2006, Sonnenberg was the only farmer and rancher in the Colorado House. In 2014, Sonnenberg was elected to the Colorado State Senate. In the Senate, Sonnenberg served as chairman of the Agricultural Natural Resources and Energy Committee and Vice Chair of the Military and Veterans Affairs Committee. In 2016, Sonnenberg was selected to serve as President Pro Temper of the Senate. Uh, Jerry, thanks so much for being on the program. Gosh, you make me sound pretty good. It's <laughs> always my pleasure to be on. How are you today? How is it up where you are? You guys getting a bunch of snow? Well, actually, I flew in last night, and I'm in Denver. Uh, doing that. I'm currently a county commissioner as well in Logan County, and we have some commissioner meetings uh, uh, today in Denver, today and tomorrow. So uh, I, I haven't made it home yet. So uh, I understand it's not supposed to be much. Uh, we got a little rain, uh, a lot of rain, uh, but that's all right. You guys can have this snow, and then it'll melt go down the South Platte, we can store it, and then we can use it later on. We call that augmentation snow. <laughs> I, and I forgot, uh, my apologies, yes, following a 16-year six year legislative career in the state capitol, he's now farming, but also serves as a member of the Logan County uh, County Commissioners. So, uh, Jerry, uh, explain to people why you would be best to represent them from Congressional District 4 to Washington, D.C.? Well, and, and that's a great question because we have some good candidates in a large field. Uh, I think I'm the best because of that leadership and experience uh, uh, that I gained while I was in the legislature to be able to figure out how to solve problems, build coalitions, and still maintain my conservative principles. And I think it's important that we have somebody with deep roots I actually live in the same house that I was born in and that my father was raised in. I raised my children there. I'm on a farm that's been in the family over a hundred years. So I have those deep roots in the communities. The, the community knows me. The Eastern Plains knows me. And I know them. I know the issues. I've been part of those issues, uh, worked on those issues, and actually understand those issues, whether it small business, where it be parental rights uh, with regard to education, because as you know, education issues in Douglas County are much different than places like a Rickery or Genoa Hugo and those type of places. So uh, I think I'm well versed uh, to be able to hit the ground running, especially with the news this week, uh, that uh, I, I can go there and make a difference right away. And I'm one of the few that can. Let's talk about the news this week because Ken Buck kind of surprised everybody on Tuesday by saying he's going to resign next week. I believe it's March 22nd, so the end of next week. He's going to be done. Originally, he was going to retire, not run for re-election, which would have carried him all the way through November. He's done now, and that's going to force a special election in June, right at the same time that there would have traditionally been a primary for this seat. Uh, how does this change the, the race this year? Your approach, are you working to get the nomination from the, uh, the CD4 Central Committee to be the Republican nominee for that special election? Uh, indeed, I am. Uh, I am working, uh, working hard to uh, earn their support. And quite honestly, though, that doesn't change my campaign because I was working hard uh, to get their support for the assembly anyhow. So uh, traveling to uh, uh, each of the counties, uh, visiting with uh, leadership there, visiting uh, with other people in the counties, uh, it doesn't really change anything for me. Uh, I've continued to work that aspect and will continue to uh, have those conversations uh, and meet with those folks and listen to what their issues are and see how I can be helpful to them. So it doesn't change. It just kind of accelerates it a little. Do we know when the uh, CD4 Central Committee is going to make their decision? 
I have not heard yet. It has to happen between 10 and 20 days from uh, uh, the vacancy or the announcement, I believe. Okay. Gotcha. So in the next uh, two weeks or so, we should be hearing that. Uh, now, Lauren Boebert has decided she's not going to seek that. Part of the complication is if she was to run in that special election, she would have to resign early her seat in Congressional District 3. But uh, Lauren Boebert, according to one poll, is leading in this race. She has a money advantage. Why are you better fit for this seat than Lauren Boebert? Well, and I don't know what poll you're seeing, but there was a poll done commissioned by somebody that left Ted Harvey and myself out of that poll. So she's touting the poll that she's winning by 25 points, but doesn't have everybody in the race. So I don't know if she uh, put that poll out there or what the issue is, because our polling shows it's much closer than that. And our polling also shows that she couldn't win a vacancy. Our polling shows she has 25, 30% of, uh, uh, of support in the district. And uh, when people actually understand uh, the issues she uh, is up against, whether it's her personal issues or that she actually doesn't understand or know the district and uh, uh, maybe commuting back and forth, not really living in the district, uh, that diminishes. So I think uh, her campaign has looked uh, I'm guessing and said, look, uh, you may not win that. That may not be a good avenue for you. There are obviously other factors involved, uh, whether, she, you know, with her having them to resign to run in this. So yeah, it becomes a challenge for her campaign. Uh, what I'll tell you is that uh, we have some good candidates over here that actually live in the district of the fourth and uh, can make a difference. And I think that's what the people of this district are, are looking for. We're talking with Jerry Sonnenberg. He has a storied career in Colorado. He served in the state house. He served in the state Senate. He served as a member of the Colorado Farm Bureau Board of Directors and as a county commissioner in Logan County. Uh, what's your response to the fact that Lauren did get the endorsement from Donald Trump? You know, uh, from my perspective, quite frankly, uh, uh, that's nice, good for her. But the fact of the matter is I care more about the endorsement of the voters in the 4th District. Uh, I've got some pretty good endorsements myself that I can tout. Uh, uh, Senator Cory Gardner, Senator Hank Brown, Senator Wayne Allard, who all served in the 4th Congressional District before they became U.S. Senators. Uh, also very proud of the endorsements I have up and down the Eastern Plains, whether it's county commissioners, uh, all in a number of the uh, counties in the Eastern Plains, uh, law enforcement, uh, local uh, businessmen. Uh, but the fact of the matter is the people that I care about, the endorsement that I work to get are those voters uh, those that are in the Republican Central Committee, uh, those that are actually just hardworking people with dirt underneath their fingernails. Mm. Uh, talk a little bit about your ranch. I'd love to lo know more about that. This was a ranch you grew up on. What what kind of stuff did you all ranch out there? Actually, we uh, we have both a farm and a ranch. Uh, <laughs> we raise corn and wheat and millet and hay. And uh, we use the farm to actually vertically integrate into our small feedlot. Uh, we run somewhere between 250 to 300 mama cows. Uh, and then we run a couple hundred yearlings each year. Uh, as I said, we have a small feedlot as well. Uh, and I have, uh, I'm very blessed to have two boys that wanted to stay on the farm and the ranch. Uh, one of the boys runs the farming side and the trucks. Uh, the other boy runs the ranching side and the feedlot, uh, and, and their families are involved, and it, it, it's exciting. They're the fifth generation. Uh, the sixth generation, the, the one I'm most proud of, don't tell my kids that, but I have 10 grandkids, uh, and many of them are out on the farm and, and actively involved. And I'm, I'm just, I, I am truly blessed to have a, a great family. Uh, farming and ranching op uh, uh, opportunity and operation.
God, that's amazing. I, I have a real soft spot in my heart for the farming and ranching community in Colorado. I have really good friends of the family, and I understand at my core how important it is to the fabric of what Colorado is. Jeff and Bill talking to Jerry Sonnenberg, running for Congressional District 4, uh, has announced that he is going to be seeking the special election uh, position and to run in that one. So I want to talk to you, Mr. Sonnenberg. You've been there a long time in the district. What have you seen change in the district and how has that changed the representation that the district needs and why are you then best suited in your in your opinion uh, to be there what have you seen that has grown and changed and why does it take someone like you in your opinion to be the representation in that district well i i think one of the things uh, that has changed most in the district is we have seen government step in and try to uh uh well, I don't know what they were trying to do. I think uh, they were trying to be helpful. But as you know, uh, as, as we all know, when government steps in, it usually does more damage than it does good. Uh, one Some of those issues that I worked on when I was in the legislature was uh, we were dealing with water quality and air quality, uh, water quality issues where all of a sudden our local government the state government goes down to these small communities uh, like Isla or Sugar City and, and say, you know, I know you've been drinking this water for years, but we've changed our standards and now you have to do all of these things to fix the water. And you take communities that have a small number of people like uh, Isla, for example, and you saddle them with a million or two million dollar bill to try and meet these new regulations, uh, you have to try and figure out how to navigate that. And so it became a challenge uh, for them and even Sterling, uh, which is a larger community out there in my home community, that they changed the levels in which they decided when water was safe and when it's not safe. It didn't change anything. It's the same water they've been using for 100 years, but then all of a sudden they have to spend 30-some million dollars to mitigate that. Those are issues that have become challenging for communities. And then you look at agriculture. Uh, you remember when uh, uh, they made it more difficult for agriculture to utilize uh, pesticides, uh, made it more uh, difficult for them to get fertilizer, uh, and many of the farmers and ranchers along the border uh, went across the state lines where it was easier to get that uh, get those products and then uh, made it uh, impossible for our businesses within the state to do business. They would lose that business. Those are things that government has, uh, uh, we have seen more of government try to do. And now in the current legislative session, all of the things they're trying to do with regard to trucks uh, and, and how we move our food to the front range and our products to the front range so they have food uh, and energy and the fiber. Uh, we can look at uh, uh, well, uh, the the pesticides uh, issues that they're trying to deal with at the state legislature to, again, make it more difficult for us to do business. And I don't know if you know this or not, but it's a fascinating story. Years ago, I used to, out at the Barman Ranch, I used to be a weather station for the National Weather Service. So I would read the weather every day and report uh, what that weather was, rainfall and all. And we have data that goes back into the 1800s where we read that. If you remember, 2000 to 2010 was dry, and it was hot. And it was actually drier and hotter than it was in the 1930s hmm. when we had the Dust Bowl days. But why didn't we have the Dust Bowl days between 2000 and 2010? Because agriculture, without government telling them, hmm found ways to take care of the land better to conserve and use uh, pesticides or, or herbicides and were able to protect the ground from erosion. Uh, and, and people up here along the Front Range 
struggle with understanding how that works and how farmers and ranchers like myself that have been out there for a hundred years. Well, I haven't been for a hundred <laughs> years. Some may think so, but been on that farm for a hundred years, leave it better every year or strive to leave it better every year than it was the year before. We're talking with uh, Jerry Sonnenberg. Yeah. Jerry is running for congressional district four. Jerry, the district has changed as a result of the uh, redistricting that took place after the latest census. And you definitely have a strong connection with rural Colorado. How are you going to serve Douglas County, more suburban districts? Uh, and, and that's a great question. And I will tell you that I actually, even though they couldn't vote for me, I voted for them when I was in the legislature. I did things to help small business. I did things to help uh, uh, families with education. Uh, I actually was the guy that ran the bill that increased uh, uh, or decrease the bottleneck on I-25 and that expansion between Denver and Colorado Springs uh, made highway transportation uh, or funding a priority. Those are things that I did while I was in the legislature that not only helps Douglas County and the Eastern Plains, but all of Colorado. And that has always been my mission as a legislator. I want to talk John Caldera in 2017. Uh, the Independence Institute gave you the Californian of the Year Award. They said for destroying Tabor and denying Coloradans a vote on taxes. Have you and John been able to mend fences and work together since then? Uh, absolutely. As you know, John and I uh, teamed up. Uh, I'm, I'm big on tax cuts. I ran tax cut legislation. And when those were killed, John and I would uh, team up and we ran ballot initiatives in 2020 to reduce your income tax. And then again in 2022, reduce your income tax even more. So John and I have worked. Uh, we've come to an understanding that we were in a legislature that uh, uh, that they were going to shut down hospitals. And uh, I had, that was unacceptable for us in rural Colorado. Uh, and so uh, we, the, the Joint Budget Committee, who was, going, was taking away your $50 uh, refund that you were supposed to get that year, I took that tool away from them, from the Joint Budget Committee, so they could not balance the budget on the backs of hospitals. And in that process, did some things to help with the Republican uh, uh, issues, uh, such as highway transportation or transportation funding, uh, business personal property tax exemption, Medicaid reform, some of those things. But uh, yes, uh, that was a challenge, and we have worked through that, and John and I uh, have partnered since then to reduce your income tax. We're talking with Jerry Sonnenberg running for Congressional District 4 here in Colorado. We're going to do a few rapid fire questions here. We've done these for the other candidates as well. Would you support a federal ban on abortion? Yes, I would. Would you support mass deportation of illegal immigrants? Yes, I would. Would you have supported the impeachment of Mayorkas uh, a little different than the person that currently holds that seat. Yes, I would. Great. And then final one, uh, would you have supported Ken Buck's effort to invoke Amendment 25 uh, and and encourage the cabinet to remove Joe Biden from office for his incapacity? Uh, I, sure, I, I would have done that. It obviously isn't going to go anywhere, but the, I would have supported that. Absolutely. Great. Well, we've been talking with Jerry Sonnenberg. His website's sonnenbergforcongress.com. His last name's spelled S-O-N-N-E-N-B-E-R-G, S-O-N-N-E-N-B-E-R-G, Sonnenberg for Congress. As I mentioned before, a storied career here in Colorado, everything from Colorado's Farm Bureau Board of Directors to State House, State Senate, County Commissioner. He's a rancher on the Eastern Plains of Colorado, and he's seeking your vote. So, uh, get a chance to know him and you can watch all of these interviews on our YouTube channel. If you go to 710 KNUS, so you can be informed. He's also seeking to be the Republican nominee in that special election. So it's a little confusing, but he may end up on a few different ballots here. So you'll have the chance to vote for him. Jerry, I really appreciate you being on the Jeff yeah, and thanks. Bill show today. 
It's always my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And, and have a wonderful rest of the day in this beautiful, snow-filled front range. Only a rancher <laughs> would love all this water that's coming. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. I sure appreciate it. Hey, I know you're thinking about a kitchen or bathroom remodel for this year. And the first call you need to make is to the art of granite. Creating the perfect kitchen or bathroom countertop is all about understanding your needs and personal style. That's why communication is key. Mitch Floria is the master craftsman with the art of granite and works with his team of highly skilled craftsmen, each with their own unique expertise to bring your vision to life. From single residential installations to large scale projects, Mitch and his team at the Art of Granite will listen to you and get you what you need. Mitch provides granite, marble, quartz, and other materials from his own warehouse in Denver West at wholesale prices with no markup so you can get the most for your budget. Mention KNUS and receive a bathroom countertop free with the purchase of your fantastic new kitchen countertops or Get a kitchen or bathroom sink free with the purchase of any countertop package. Schedule a consultation with Mitch and visit his beautiful showroom in Denver West. I've been there. It's fantastic. Mitch is a great guy, loves the Constitution, Declaration of Independence. It's framed right there in his office. Give him a call at 303-386-5919. That's 303-386-5919. Or you can visit his website at theartofgranite.com to start dreaming about your new countertops. That's theartofgranite.com. Let us know what you think of Jerry Sonnenberg. Uh, do you support him? Is he the right guy to represent Congressional District 4? Definitely embracing the Eastern Slope. Yeah. I mean, the rancher, that's that's who he is. Smart message. And, and he's happy to embrace that. If you go to his website, it's rancher conservative leader. Yeah, and it's 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 very smart. His his messaging about his connection with the district is strong. I loved him shouting out uh, some of the smaller towns like a Rickery. Yeah, I'd right. forgotten about them and their and their uh, tiny little. Do they play six man or eight man? I don't remember which. They do. I mean, it might be six man football uh, out there. Yeah, and, and I love uh, the roots. And I liked his answer on how to change uh, the rapid fire questions uh, again. I, I will when we have the politicians on, I will only walk through a door that is open. I don't think yeah. it's fair for me to submarine them and drag them into a direction that may not be, you know, uh, part of the discussion at that time. But a couple of those rapid fire questions, the mass deportation and the federal abortion ban, those may be subjects we get into next time we talk with him about that as far as uh, what he looks like, et cetera. But I, I, it's not fair for me to jump in at the tail end. And we didn't discuss this. It earlier, is. So. Uh, it, oh, it makes yeah. all the leftist news blogs. <laughs> yes. But we will. We'll, Tip of the hat yeah. to the Colorado Times recorder and oh, Colorado yeah. polls. Absolutely. Um, read you. But look, this is a Republican primary. This is what Republican voters yes. care about. Absolutely. They want to know where you stand on abortion. Where do you stand on mass deportation? Lauren Boebert came out with her plan the other day. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. It's, so it is build the wall and put them on the bus. Yeah. And again, it's they got here by buses. We're going yeah. to take them home by buses. <laughs> I, I still the functionality of that idea, the execution of that. I it, it just I, I don't I haven't seen anybody that seems to accurately or comprehensively uh, deal with that. And it, it sounds great that this is what we would do. But oh, yeah. also the idea, well, I, I understand the, the building the wall thing. Uh, I get that. But. How come when I'm watching the uh, Fox News and the uh, Newsmax and the OAN and stuff, how come I keep seeing people go uh, through the wall or coming over? <laughs> I just that's the thing. I mean, if we're gonna talk about the idea, if we're gonna send the message that this wall is gonna stop them, then stop showing me pictures of people not being stopped by the wall. Show me someone walking up and going, "Ooh, uh, yeah, I gotta go this way." I mean, show me that. As every time I'm seeing the, the the images, I'm seeing people get around it, over it, through it. So I'm. I, I'm less convinced that we're going to be able to do it. Also, uh, have you seen the border? Um, that's a problem too, building the wall all the way through. It's a real big problem. We got a river Just there. Then oh, rivers and mountains river. and, and, and all and that also, stuff. We also have people that own land there. And mm -hmm. if you did this, you would have to come and take their land through eminent domain. And that's an issue. If you were, if you were on the border and you have land that is literally there and the government comes in and goes, Hey, we're putting this big giant wall through your land and you're going to lose some of it because of it. Like, Hang on. A lot of the landowners that I see down there that have been interviewed are really tired of dealing with the problem. Oh, yeah, of, they are. But... Of having to deal with dead bodies. Oh, absolutely. That are they're coming across. They're completely tired of it. However, yeah. in, in all those interviews, I haven't seen a single one go, what we need is a big wall. Take part of my property to do it. 
Mm-hmm. I haven't seen a single one of them suggest that. And every point. time, every time I see the wall, uh, and and we've had this a uh, number of different times, we have lawsuits from those landowners saying you can't come in and you can't take this wall. The other part is that in order to build some of it, we would have to cede part of America back to Mexico because of where the wall would be. It would have to be more on our side than it would be on the Mexico-U.S. border just because of where we'd have to set it up. You couldn't build it in certain areas uh, right on the border. So, okay. It's a, it's a weird it's a weird idea. I just don't think that when we talk about it, that people have looked at the actual execution and the geography involved. Yeah. I, I think that could all be secondary to a culture that just doesn't accept this anymore. Yeah, it could so be. you but get, you get to the e verify yeah, and you're like, you know what? We're not going to hire you. You can come up here and we're not going to hire you. Then, oh, I'd be you know, I, I, yeah. I think that that would be yeah. secondary to that. OK, I'd let's get there. to we'll get to your calls. Give us oh, a yeah, call. 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971. Text us on the 710K in US app. What do you think of Jerry Sonnenberg? I'd like to hear from 710K in US listeners because you are the ones that are going to be voting in this election. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, Can US.
man, this gets me in the mood for summertime in Colorado. <laughs> this is a great song. This is like July, Colorado, Steamboat Lake. That's my happy place. This just, oh, Zach Brown band. This is just, this is just a feel good <laughs> song. This is one of those that, you know, you feel about hanging out with friends, with yeah, family right? and just, yeah, having that good time when, you know, the, the stress is flown away and, and the beers or adult beverages are flowing even greater yeah. and the stresses are going away. And it's, yeah, it's that idea of being in that happy place with your friends, wherever that is. It's a great song. Let's uh, check in. Speaking of good friends, let's check in with Blake Olson on the news he's working on. What's up, Blake? A little chicken fried. Here we go. Denver getting slammed, of course, with the snow. We'll have more on that here from XL Energy. And the man, the driver who allegedly killed the 13-year-old in Highlands Ranch in the crosswalk, he has been arrested. We'll talk about that and more on the TikTok bill. All that coming up at the top of the hour, guys. That's great. Thanks so much for covering all that. Uh, if you were... Thinking of going outside, don't. It is very bad. It's going to continue to snow all day today. I'm looking at pictures of uh, I-70 closed uh, over Floyd Hill. Um, and this is from the Colorado State Patrol. If you have to ask, how do I get there? The answer is you can't. Yeah. Just don't so do it. Just yeah. don't. Just don't. It did avoid work, avoid going to the stores. In fact, uh, my wife is even texted me and saying, you know, um, since you have to drive by a grocery store on the way home, how about I send you a list? And and you know the answer to that. The answer to that is of course I'll of be course, happy honey. to start That's to stop right. and then do that and and put my personal safety in, in danger for the family to make sure that they have all the pop tarts they need or whatever it is. Yeah. So for about 25, 30 minutes, we interviewed Jerry Sonnenberg. He is running for congressional district four. We've got Jim on the line. Uh, Jim, you're on the Jeff and Bill show news talk, seven ten K and us. What'd you think of that, Jim? Well, Hey, good morning. Uh, uh, wonderful snowstorm. We got, yeah, I, I missed that, uh, interview i just called about the uh, illegal immigration oh yeah oh, the conversation towards funnel. the end of that yeah. go ahead yeah I, I i don't think the border fence is uh anything but a big boondoggle especially if we uh have to divert money from the military to get it done and then you're gonna have leadership at some point that's going to throw the gates open so at best that thing would even if it worked would only be a funnel yeah, I would agree with you on that one. But Jeff and I have different perspectives on this. What would be the funnel? What is, uh, the what idea is? of the because of the uh, um, the uh, wall being up there, oh, and then it funnels then everybody, everybody to ports to the, of entry, which yeah. is which is what then, they're doing based on asylum claims right now. They're saying if you show up at a port of entry, uh, um, then why, you make an why don't claim. we just do asylum claims in your own country? Why why are we making people walk like hundreds of miles? Well, they're, because we know that they're not really going to get we're going to let them into the country anyways. That's the only reason to do that. We have to stop paying them um, to uh, clean our toilets and pick our food. And uh, that means Americans have to have more babies to, to pick our lettuce and our uh, food. Did you see what happened in Florida last year after they passed that, uh, that uh, immigration law? Yeah. Year? All the, all the laborers left. And so well, more yeah, jobs so went to right. Americans. No, construction no, just no, stopped. The, crop, the crops uh, are <laughs> rotting in the field and the food prices went up. Uh, so now we've got to stop throwing away the food that we uh, purchase at the grocery store. I mean, so then why have any immigration laws if you're just going to if, if we're so dependent on them for well, our now, food and cleaning, then why have any immigration laws? Why don't you just let these people up? Well, this is what the Chamber of Commerce actually wants. Um, in fact, that's why they were suing uh, the Maricopa County down there where Judge Arpaio, not Arpaio, Sheriff Arpaio was putting them in, putting people in uh, outdoor prison camps. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce was the biggest um, obstacle. Yeah, I think that's why conservatives that. have moved away from embracing them so much. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. But I, I think there's two sides to every coin. And if we think that uh, uh, just doing everything like a business is the smart thing to do, then uh, we're going to we're going to have some issues in this country. It makes about as much sense as that uh, pipeline legislation to uh, fast track our uh, Canadian oil sands pipeline to the port of Houston. 
Yeah, that was a weird one for me. Uh, that was well. The, yeah. My problem with that was uh, there were three refineries that the taxpayers got to uh, pay to shut down, and uh, of course that would only raise the food um, prices and the production prices in the Upper Midwest moderately. They said, but uh, that would raise the food prices as well. So I, I don't think we should be shutting refineries down so that we can streamline our resources uh, to sell it to Europe just because it's so profitable to send away all of our resources over here. I think we should save something for our ourselves. Jim, I appreciate that. the call. Thanks so much. Jim, the yeah. line is going to be open 303-696-1971 if you want to add to the conversation on that. I like that uh, conversation. I like, yeah, I think the, the, the pipeline look, got an issue. Look, yeah. uh, on, on the illegal immigration issue, yeah. I mean, the equation, if, if you just look at it and go, well, uh, they, they do jobs that other Americans don't want to do. They're willing to pick. They're willing to work for cheaper, all that stuff. That's that's just one aspect of a much larger equation. Yes. Uh, you know, you have the social services attached to it. I mean, the city of Denver spending on the low end, $120 million. On the reality end, $180 million to provide legal costs, to provide housing, to provide education. Denver Health is in a sp- death spiral financial death spiral because they can't pay for all this yeah but that's a part of that though with the denver health it also has to do with the mechanisms that we use to pay for our healthcare system and that's broken as well how we're doing how we how we functionally and again i don't want to go into the healthcare conversation but that's part of it too uh the reason denver health is in in dire straits is because of how we've chosen to pay for it and, yeah but i yeah. just I, I don't think you can to uh, was it Jim's point? Yeah, Jim, Jim yeah. you can't you can't just go. Well, they all do the jobs. Nobody else is going to do. Well, there's, uh, and there's then go. Well, demand, uh, yeah, I know, and that's I mean, where you and I agree on yeah. e-verify. Oh, absolutely, 110%. absolutely agree on yeah. e-verify. One hundred and ten percent. I absolutely because I think if you take away the 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 the, the green light, the yeah. desire that they could come here and make money because they can't get hired. Yeah. Which again, I think that it puts on a pressure for them not to come. And and I would say with the verify a larger guest worker visas, and I would love to see seasonal visas because what Jim's talking about. I'm okay with seasonal visas. They got to go home though. Oh yeah, it's not. But again, we can't be cutting services to citizens. No, but that's to provide for that. And here's the thing: is that I think the functionally, I believe that the vast majority of the uh, people that come across and that are illegal and even claim um, fake asylum are not looking to stay here permanently. There are some that are fleeing those horrible, nasty conditions in their home, et cetera. But there's also a portion of them that would like to be able to go back home. That's why they send money back home. They still have roots back home. Uh, I'm looking for those, those people that are involved. And many times those are the migrant farmers. Uh, you know, there are different issues with some people that come in here and seek the asylum. But many of the migrant farmers, the people Jim was talking about, they would be happy to be here for a season and then go home. Because what it would do is imagine if, you could go for a six months, seven months out of the year and make three, four times what you could over a regular salary mm-hmm. in your home country. Then when you go home, that's vacation time. That's time where you and the family get to spend time together. So you're gone for a while and then you come back. It's in, se- in some ways, it is the same model as a professional athlete, a professional politician, where you're gone for so long and then you have these breaks. And I think we should lean into that because I think they would behave that way. I know it's a bad analogy, but that's the idea is you make the money doing this and then you go home and you have time with the family then. And I think we encourage that. And that's what it used to work. But I'm doing my best to hold it back, Bill. I know you are. I know. (laughs) All right. Hey, listen, do you have a high school student considering their college plans? Are they ready to discover more about their gifts and talents? Do you hope to see them become part of the next generation of Christian leaders? Your student is invited to Colorado Christian University's Discovery Preview. This week-long event is completely free. Discovery Preview is designed for students who desire to seek God's purpose and calling in their lives. Students are immersed in the community, culture, and mission of Colorado Christian University. Workshops focused on calling, career, and Christ-centered leadership help them explore their unique strengths and potential career options. Colorado Christian University's Christ Center community also takes the students on a Colorado adventure to experience the beauty of the Rocky Mountains. Eligible students can also qualify for a $1,250 annual scholarship just for attending. Don't miss Discovery Preview this summer, June 17th through the 21st. The event is designed for seniors and juniors in high school and, again, is absolutely free. To learn more, go to ccu.edu slash discovery 
That's ccu.edu slash discovery. We'll get to your calls and texts. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, Can US. The snow has fallen and it's cold outside, but this radio show is hot, covering all the news and analysis you need on the issues facing Coloradans. Jerry Sonnenberg joined us at the 7 o'clock hour to dive into why he can best represent the citizens of the of CD4 back in Washington, D.C. If you missed that, you can go to 710K in U.S. and listen to the podcast. We asked some uh, tough questions, including... Uh, the time John Caldera called him the Californian yeah. of the year. What was his response to that? And has he been able to work with John over at the Independence Institute since then? So yeah. we, we got to get some seeds response. for a uh, further conversation in the future, though. Things That's right. Do. Uh, Jerry, yeah, nice. Jerry uh, embracing and willing to do mass deportations, willing to support a federal ban on abortion. Willing to impeach Mayorkas. Yeah, the federal uh, abortion ban I find interesting. That's one that politically I find very interesting. And simply because post Dobbs, 
it was sold as finally we've gotten what we always wanted. Let the states decide. And 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 the immediately the first thing I said, and I was working with George Brockler at the time, and said, "What you need to do now is every single Republican candidate or politician you talk to, ask them about a federal abortion ban." So because that's going to be the next issue. So and he's like, "No, no, 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 no." I said, "Yes, yes, 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 it is." And that's now the issue. And I think that's interesting. It sort of. So the the pushback on the road decision was that it took away the ability to legislate this issue. Whether that was at the state or the federal level was never was never really once conservatives never really embraced one aspect but, of that. Yeah, they did. The, the celebrations were all about states that go back, go back and watch sort the videos. Of. You know, all the celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that's just getting started on the Jeff and Bill show. Today. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> all right. You're listening to Jeff and Bill show. News Talk 710. Can you as? It's one of those beautiful days that makes Denver, Colorado very unique. Yesterday, 70 degrees and sunny. Yeah. And today, do not walk outside, drive. You're going to get stuck in a ditch. It's horrible. Oh, it's a mess. Uh, it Gross is a mess. mess out there. And I, on my drive in, at least a dozen cars in ditches. And that was at five this morning, getting lots of reports of additional roads closing, including here in Douglas County. So, yeah. Did you do that when you're driving in? There. 
you're driving in, you're seeing those cars in front of you. And you're like, what are you idiots doing out here? And you're like, oh, wait, <laughs> hang on. I'm here, too. <laughs> I'm That's one of the exactly idiots. right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, you're listening to the Jeff and Bill show. And we are in studio. We made the drive in. Yes, we did. So. That, that's why we are better than you today. Ha ha! <laughs> we are superior. No, we are just dumber. Yeah, we made the we made the drive. Jeff's drive much longer than mine. But yeah, the cars in the ditches. Uh, you got a two wheel drive. Do not do it. Don't don't go anywhere. If you can even get out of your neighborhood, if you're in the uh, Denver proper, you're in the suburbs. Wow, your side roads are gonna be a mess. Once you get to the main roads, uh, I've seen plows. Uh, they they seem to be doing a job at times and sometimes making it difficult to change lanes, but that's okay. It's, you know, we all need that little mountain that we need to cross over in the middle of the road. <laughs> Makes things more fun, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Douglas County is on accident alert. Um, Castle Rock is commercial vehicle chain laws, yeah. I-25, both directions from Lone Tree to Monument Hill. Wow, all Jeez. the way down there. Wow. Multiple semis stuck blocking lanes. Drivers exit the highway to chain up. No chains, no travel. Um, and then now Douglas County reporting that Highway 86 is closed Jeez. due to a semi truck in the snow. So they were right to cancel school on this. Yeah. Morning. God love them for doing <laughs> it's that. Funny that it's the the semis are stuck. I mean, that's a big deal. Right. Like they, didn't put, they didn't put the chains on. We've got two different you know roadways there that are closed because of semis. So, yeah, it's a mess out there. If you go to coloradotrip.org, you can get a sense of the road closures there. And basically anything I-70 going into the mountains is closed right now. So, yeah. Um, remember those days where you're finding your way up there. Now, you talked about you know going up and going skiing when you're younger. Remember those days where you're like, oh, snow, oh, look at all the snow, the snow, this is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, not, we can't go to school, but we can go skiing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Might have done that a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, and, and and risk getting up there. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. In my 1982 yes. Nissan Datsun. It's, it's different, the idea of risking life and limb to get to school versus skiing. <laughs> ski. There are you're priorities. You're true Colorado yes. at that point. <laughs> yes, there are priorities, people. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, just be careful out there yeah, and, and stay home and listen to this. Hey, in the nine o'clock hour, Brandon Straka is going to join us. You may know that name. He's the founder of the walk away campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat party. We're going to dive into what this upcoming election season is going to look like. Does he see liberals and Democrats leaving? That was who he was. He organized a big rally in Washington, D.C., 5,000 Democrats that had walked away from the Democrat Party. And is he the problem with the homeless? Because he's had all of them walk away from the party and now they're just <laughs> wandering the streets. They're lost. They're looking for all the free stuff. And, you know, they're just asking for you to give them things because that's what liberals do. They're just like, come on, you need to give me all your stuff. That, that's kind of the this issue. So maybe huh? it's his fault. Maybe the homeless issue is his fault. I'm just spitballing here. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. I, I just might be wrong. I'm just just an idea. Uh, today you're, uh, are days that you're very grateful that you have uh, charities that are taking care of the homeless. Oh, downtown. yeah. Yeah, you know, these are those days Deborah where, Rescue Mission, yeah. Catholic Charities, those types of groups that are making sure folks have a warm place to be. Yeah, and that's important on days like today. As much as we are like, oh, just get you know, get the get them to treatment, get them into a shelter. That these are the days in which you just need to suspend that. Oh, I don't want to say judgment, but it is judgment, it isn't is. it? It's it is. a little bit. Yeah. So you almost have to suspend it because again, this is this is a larger mission that even if they're struggling with addiction, even if they're going through things that we don't agree with, uh, then you still you need to care for them in this type of weather. So, yeah, um, I want to get into this article and uh, our good friends over at Complete Colorado are brilliant for covering this. You remember the free lunches vote, right? Yes, yes, I do. You remember that there was no restriction and guidance as to who was going to get those free lunches. So Kent Denver kids and Cherry Hills and Cherry Creek kids are going to get free lunches too. Well, listen to this. Proposition FF in 2022, where Coloradans voted to tax rich people to give free lunches to all public school kids. So I guess maybe not Kent Denver, but definitely Cherry Hills kids and Cherry Creek High School kids got this. State schools have been providing free lunches for less than a year, and the program is already going bust. It's $56 million underwater. $56 million yeah, underwater. So the state is going to have to cut back the program 
Uh, we want to get into your thoughts and this and more. Feel free to give us a call. 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971. Or text us on the 710 KNUS app. Let's check in on the news with Blake Olson. Good morning, Blake. Good morning. Yeah, you can spend it on uh, either breakfast and lunch or washed up quarterbacks. Evidently, 40, 54 to $56 million. Wow. 31 in Denver. As you woke up the snow this morning, uh, the sounds you hear right now are snow plows, 54 of them out on the main roads and 36 in the neighborhoods. The 710 five day forecast is coming up. Our top story Denver facing its worst snowstorm. In over three years, the Mile High City is expected to receive upwards of a foot of snow today. Boulder potentially seeing more. Over 900 flights have been canceled or delayed. I-70 and US-6, Highway 4, Highway 119 are closed. Don't drive unless you have to. Expecting some power lines and branches down this morning. Excel says power outages could occur at any time. Excel's Andrew Holder. We have our crews ready to go. We have materials ready to go. We'll, we'll get power restored as safely and as efficiently as possible. Colorado's Lauren Boebert, of course, uh, called Ken Buck's decision to resign early week sauce. She announced Wednesday that she would not be resigning to run in the special election to fill his seat. Uh, this threatens Boebert's chances of winning in CD4. Jerry Sonnenberg is going to run. He joined the fellas this morning, and he said that it may be tough for Boebert to win CD4. I promise you he did. Yeah, it becomes a challenge for her campaign. We have some good candidates over here that actually live in the district of the 4th and uh, can make a difference. And I think that's what the people of this district are, are looking for. House Speaker Mike Johnson says the House will apply every amount of pressure on the Senate to get the bill banning TikTok passed. Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin said the current ownership structure is a threat to national security. I think the world we all want to live in is one in which ByteDance divests from TikTok and TikTok can continue under different ownership. The possibility of CCP interference and control of the algorithm is what we're trying to address with this bill. By dance would have to sell the app within 180 days. Kamala Harris will make history today when she becomes the first VP to visit an abortion clinic while in office. Former President Trump is set to attend a federal court hearing in Florida today over his handling of classified documents once again. 52-year-old Ruben uh, Morones has been arrested after he allegedly hit and killed 13-year-old Alexander Makowitz, who was on his way to school on his electric skateboard in Highlands Ranch last week. It is 28 in Lakewood, 29 in Parker, 31 in Denver Nuggets over the heat, 188. They have won four straight CSU over San Jose, uh, San Jose State in the Mountain West Conference Tournament. They take on Nevada tonight. CU uh, takes on Utah this evening in the Pac-12 Tournament. The Avs over the Canucks, 4-3 to three in overtime. Jeff and Bill continue with their snow gear and pajamas on, I'm sure, underneath Blake Olson News Talk 710 KNUS. Say goodbye to clutter and hello to convenience when you experience organization transformation in your home. Roll them out shelves. Your clutter transformation experts create affordable Colorado crafted organized storage solutions. These custom options will maximize and organize your kitchen and bath storage as roll them out shelves carefully designs and builds roll out drawers to fit Fit your space perfectly to clear the clutter. Contact owners Joyce and Brent at Roll em Out Shelves to schedule your free in-home estimate today. That's a nice song. Just imagine the snow falling. Yeah. Dolores O'Riordan, Cranberries. They're great live. <laughs> oh, so good. She's a little Irish girl. How many She's concerts like, do you go to a year? Um, not as much anymore because uh, if you've noticed, I'm old. 
<laughs> uh, I do several a year, but I, I have been to hundreds, hundreds of shows. I was a concert rat. In fact, it's weird to just mention that a uh, buddy of mine, uh, shout out to uh, Dennis Valdez, who went to high school with, uh, just shared memories on social media of concert tickets. And these are concert tickets yeah. that, and all those shows I was at, three of them I went with him to that he shared these tickets from. And this is, we're talking, let's see if I go over here and look, uh, The Cure at Fiddler's Green, um, Public Image Limited at Red Rocks, New Order at Red Rocks, Depeche Mode at Red Rocks. And the big one, the big one is a band that many people don't know, uh, the Jesus and Mary Chain. And they played at uh, Glenn Miller Ballroom on uh, Boulder Campus. That's an important show. Very important because of who the opener was on that tour. Who's that? It was the very first time this band ever toured and ends up being one of the biggest touring bands throughout the 90s. Uh, you might have heard of uh, him, Trent Reznor, and his band <laughs> Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> Nine Inch Nails, He yeah. was the opener on that show. And that, and they destroyed their equipment, and it took about an extra thirty minutes to get uh, the other band up on stage. They were, where they would smash. Yeah, the they were amazing, and it's, they it, it is small that anymore. Not as they? much. It's expensive. That's, <laughs> I was gonna say the thing. The label stepped in. And we're yeah, like, guys, I know. Doing that. Yeah. So oh, yeah, good. I've been to so many shows. Did, so many. Did Nine Inch Nails and Trent Reznor? Did he get? Is he still alive? Oh, for I, a guy who does no I am, new music. <sighs> Because I know Marilyn it's, Manson got all swept up in some really sexual good. assault issues. It's really good that I that they got the glass between us because I just, <laughs> just ah, God, do that you know that that Batman Robin thing with the he's, yes he's still alive. Um, actually Trent Reznor they toured two three years ago I don't remember but um he's now doing uh music for movies. Uh, he's got an Oscar. He yeah, got an Oscar. I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah, I think he's got an Oscar on it. Yeah, I know Holy he's been nominated cow. a couple of times, but yeah, he's. It's like he and Danny Elfman, uh, who again went off and did wonderful, wonderful music. You'll remember Danny Elfman. Oh, you may not, because uh, you're your age, sweet summer child. Um, it's uh, Danny Elfman was <laughs> the guy behind uh, the band called Oingo Boingo, who you may be familiar with. I've Dead... never even heard of that name of that band. What? You don't know Dead Man's Party? You don't know Weird no. Science? No. No. It was like the theme song of the movie. I'm like Johnny Cash and. Jeez. Wow. Keith Urban. Oh, Johnny Cash is fantastic. Those guys. Cash, like yeah, Urban. I yeah. listen to Johnny some Cash, music, yeah. and that's Wholesome a, a while I blues. work on the ranch, and that's yeah. about it. Oh, it's so, so many. Nine Inch Nails is great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I want to get into uh, this article that John Caldera wrote yesterday, yeah. because you're not going to find this on the news. The free and school, the free school lunch program is running out of money. You guys remember this in 2022. You may have voted for it. Proposition FF. And the critique we had at the Centennial Institute of this was that there were no real restrictions on who got the lunch. So kids from Cherry Hills and Cherry Creek High Schools were going to get free lunches. Now, I understand because I've had uh, family members that were on the free and reduced lunch program. Uh, grew up in... Uh, positions where they needed that. The problem wasn't that there should be some program out there that might help really poor kids that aren't going to be able to eat at all, get some sustenance so that they can perform well in school. There wasn't a lot of complaint about that, but what happened in Colorado was you had a program that came in and said, well, we're just going to offer it to everybody. And by the way, we're going to pay for it using nicotine and tobacco taxes. And there were no real restrictions on it. And surprise, surprise, in its first year, it's $56.1 million short. Here's from Chalkbeat. Lawmakers are having to work to try to close the funding gap. Colorado voters in 2022 supported creating limits on tax deductions for the state's highest earners as a way to fund for, oh, so I was wrong on that. It was, it was, you, they went after and taxed the rich in a way to fund free school meals for all students. I don't know what they were taxing nic nicotine for. Maybe it was another program. But advocates yeah, at the either. time said that there were families in Colorado who, due to the state's high cost of living, were struggling financially, even though they didn't qualify for subsidized meals under the federal poverty guidelines. So like I said, you had a federal way to help people get school lunches if they really needed it. But this was going to expand that and allow pretty much anybody, including rich kids, to get free, free lunches. In calculating the cost of the program, analysts expected that about 25% more children would eat at 
would eat a school meal, including students who would have qualified for free meals already and those who wouldn't. Instead, schools this year have seen a more than 35% increase in breakfast participation and a more than 31% increase for lunch compared with last year. The higher than expected participation. Really? Really? Higher than expected? You're giving free lunches to people. You don't think a lot of people would take advantage of that? And program costs is due largely to students who previously had to pay for a school meal. <laughs> so people that traditionally would pay that also did it are taking advantage of a free lunch. In most cases, the federal government doesn't reimburse the districts for any part of those ch children's meals, leaving the state to cover the costs. In the Cherry Creek School District, district leaders, Cherry Creek, that's where I went to school with like sons of Broncos and daughters of, of, of Broncos players. District leaders said they are serving about 32,000 meals a day on average, up from 23,000 just last year. So they're stuck. Yep. Are we glad we still got this? Yeah, I am. Are you? Person. Yeah, yeah, I am. And it's, I, I think they're funding method is wrong because that's I, I just think that's the wrong way to do it and, why are and you, you could okay have. with rich kids getting free lunches well here's the thing is if if we want to go ahead and do some means testing i'm okay with that but here's the issue is i have a hard time getting angry if families and this is why i think the funding is wrong if families are paying taxes and the result of that is that their kids are getting free food at the schools which they attend, it seems to me like they are reaping the benefits of the taxes they are paying to the school. I don't have an issue with that. That's why I have an issue with the funding. I think the funding mechanism in this particular situation is absolutely bass backwards. I think it's stupid. This is not where you go after, but I have, I don't see a problem with taxpayers in a particular district getting a benefit from their taxes. However, I don't see that mechanism here. No. Make sense? No, and and you got and you have no means testing. I mean, you had means testing for years with a federal program, free and reduced meals that were already yeah. out there. And so you had this all set up. This was a feel good program that was pushed upon the people of Colorado who I I remember the marketing of this because it was just like 2022. Uh, that this was going to go to help kids as if there wasn't already a program to already help them. But we're going to take we're going to limit the tax deductions on the state's highest earners. We're going to build this program. And now we can't control the costs associated with it. And it's just another example in the state of Colorado where a feel good system that we build is going to end up costing a lot more. Another program out there that we're going to have to deal with is this paid family leave program. Where it's going to, you know, John Caldera says yeah. it's going to fall into the same fate and we're going to have to cut other services or raise taxes to be able to do this. It was a, a scheme put together that was not properly funded, that provides too many services, social services to people that don't need them. And the rest of us are going to be stuck paying the bill for it. The other part in this, when we talk about the means testing, though, is. Look at the means and the average income here in Colorado. More and more kids are going to be able to are falling into that free program. So the idea, I, I just the idea that the majority of the reason that we're having this problem is that we're feeding rich kids. I, I don't see that as far as numbers. And, and the other part, though, is that, OK, so aren't we always angry about the fact that, hey, we're taking our taxes and we're giving them to uh, I've got people on the uh, text line right now. Oh, we're giving them to the migrants, the illegals. Yeah, Why are right. we doing that? Why are we doing that? And now, OK, so we're mad about giving welfare and social services to the illegal migrants. Now, now we're mad about using tax money to, to give American citizen kids food. That, that's what we're mad about. That's I just really don't think that's the role of the government. That is it? It's that, not really? the role of the government. I understand a little bit of charity if people are out there struggling, but look where we are now, Bill, where we're funding like feminine hygiene products in schools as well. Like it just keeps but, moving on down on the road. But the issue being that if you are a if you're a woman and you've ever been in that situation, access to those hygiene products should be there. Absolutely. Right. And I, you can go to the nurses. Yes. And, and I'm fine with them go to the nurses. And, yeah, I'm that fine. One off. Yeah. But it, you don't need to put 
500 of them in the female girl's no. bathroom. No, I don't think you I don't think you need to. I don't think you need to on that end. But then again, uh, I, again, I, I like John Caldera a lot, but I, I find it strange that we're complaining about tax money being used on the people that pay it. It just why, why is this an issue? And the other thing that I have is food insecurity is a significant thing for a lot of kids inside of Colorado schools. And, and I've seen it. I, I've seen where kids have expressed interest about how many days am I at home? How many of this can I take food home from the cafeteria in order to make sure that I can feed myself because we got four days off and mom and dad don't put any food inside the fridge. And we have programs and charities around Denver that feed kids for free over the course right. of summers. So there, we, the idea that this need doesn't exist, I, I think, is is silly. It exists. Uh, we can talk about the means testing, but I still come back to my point. It is tax money from Coloradans that is being used to feed Coloradans. I, it, I'm having a hard think, time. Do you think it's in the most upset. efficient way to do that you um, don't you don't think charities could provide this we think here's the thing is first of all um we're talking about the government so i don't think efficiency is <laughs> right. ever ever involved uh, you and i talked about this as a side yes. you and i talked about this recently had to take my 15 year old to the dmv and she starts complaining about how long we're here and i go listen this is a an adult lesson this the government here isn't focused on customer service because all of you have to be customers. They don't care. This office and this is designed for efficiency for them, not for you. McDonald's wouldn't run this way. You know, Disneyland doesn't run this way, but they don't care. They have a captive audience. So I think that the efficiency is not there. Um, charities can step in and could. I think there's a mechanism uh, that would be difficult to make sure you get the charities connected with all the schools that need them when the government is already there and already providing the food and they already have the cafeterias and they buy the food. So yeah, that that's if we are going to be worried about the fact that we are feeding children, I think we've lost the message. We've lost the narrative of what we are as a society. Even if they are this rich, this is kids. your bleeding heart coming yes, through, it is. man. It is. Bill, this is your bleeding heart. It is. But why? Why can't? I, but yeah, why? Why can't we use our tax money to feed our children? Because it's not the role of the government. Okay, but it it's are, not. But it's hang not. on a sec. So, but what? What is? What is the government? Right. What what makes up the government? Who involves the government? Who chooses the government? And who funds right. the government? Right. No, it's, it, so we're it's a government of the people, by yeah. the people, so, for the people. So You're if, right. So I think that when we sit there and say that the government shouldn't be doing this, we're really just saying that we shouldn't be doing this. We're no, saying that, that we, as, a per, as we, as we don't parents. want to. The parents should be doing this. But the parents aren't. And we have proof right. of that. And, and, that, that and that's an some, issue to address. Yeah, but, but, but you but can't throw if, them in jail or anything for it. How do you, what do you do? If you're going to create a society where we have free preschool, right? We, we send the kids into preschool and then we're now funding their meals. And then they go to government run elementary school and we fund their meals. And then they go to government run middle schools and fund their meals. Yeah. And, and then they go to government run high schools and we fund their meals we're not building families and, here. We're and not that, building healthy families. And, and, and how does how does the republic fall? Help me understand how the republic falls because we do that and provide that for them. Because the government's doing it, not families. All right. The phone lines are definitely blowing up. I love this one. And the text messages. Where do you fall on this? This, in my mind, should not have been a state-based program that was ever created in the first place. You had a federal program that was free and reduced meals. We had a system out there for kids that were really struggling to get food. We then came in and said, well, we we don't want to stigmatize these kids. We want to provide more uh, food out there for kids that are dealing with food insecurities. And so we're going to tax the rich to provide these programs. And now the program is so big that it's run into a $56 million deficit because we can't pay for it. Where do you fall along this? 303-696-1971. Yeah, please try to call us. I, I don't know if we're having a phone issue because uh, I've answered three phone calls so far and I've only gotten several words into it and then they all disconnect, which oh, okay. I'm, I, it, again, I, I'm, not, I'm not assuming it's the storm because people often hang up on me. So I'm used <laughs> to this. This could just be general procedure and it just could be the regular things that we do. You guys just could be hanging up on me, which again, that's okay. Uh, but uh, if you're calling and that's happening to you, it's, it's, it's not me doing it to you. It's, it's, it's the storm. 303-696-1971. Text us on the 710 KNUS app. 
Your home is a significant asset and choosing the right team to help you sell it can be the difference in thousands of dollars in your pocket. I highly recommend Gay Ribble and the Empower Home team, the realtors I trust. The Empower Home team provides exceptional service, invaluable advice, and employs unique systems to maximize the money you can get for your home. Getting an offer above your home's asking price is great, but you're leaving money on the table by not working with Gay Ribble and the Empower Home team. Gay and her experts get their clients an average of $30,000 more. Could you use an extra $30,000? That's precisely why you need Gay Ribble and the Empower Home team. Their exclusive database is filled with pre-screened buyers ready to make a purchase. Take the stress and hassle out of selling your home while getting the best price. Here's an unbeatable offer. Listen to this. Gay Ribble and the Empower Home team will sell your house for 100% of the asking price or Gay will pay the difference. It's an offer you simply cannot refuse. Get 100% of your asking price guaranteed with Gay Ribble and the Empower Home team. Reach out to my friends and realtors, Gay Ribble and the Empower Home team today. Great day to do that. Call 833 833- 301 sold or go to gayhasthebuyers.com. That's 833-301 sold or gayhasthebuyers.com. G-A-Y-E has the buyers.com. We'll get to your calls and texts. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, KNUS.
A lot of discussion around this reality that Colorado taxpayers are facing that the free school lunch program is running out of other people's money. It's $56.1 million short in its first year. <laughs> yeah. So surprised that a lot of people want to take advantage of a free lunch. A lot yeah. of text messages on this. It's interesting. They say other people's money. Who's others people? Who are the others? It's always other people's money. Well, not necessarily. Taxpayer pro funded pro programs are always other people's money. But who, who who's paying the taxes? Not just me. Oh, I know, but <laughs> so it I is. Just, I know, but other I, I people's that, money. No, I, I do. I know, but I'm just saying that just. <sighs> In terms of language, I always find it interesting that the stuff that we like is always, well, we are banding together and we're taking our our, our money yes. together and we're doing taxes and we're doing these good things. And then when we don't like it, it's other people's money as if uh, Germany's showing up and we're taking a bunch of cash from them <laughs> or Mexico is showing up and, and doing it. But that's but again, that's us. That is still right. us as far as Americans. So I, again, and there's but, a, there's yeah. a math reality here. So I'm not no, denying the fact, I'm not saying that, that Jared yeah. Polis forces program upon people. We, as the voters of Colorado passed this yep. against the will of the Centennial Institute, by the way, and other, uh, and the independents and those that put out ballot guides around the year. So, uh, you know, we did, we made this mess ourselves, but we believed the lie that somehow this thing was going to pay for itself, or it wasn't going to be this massive new government program that we were going to have to fund. I mean, $56.1 million is a lot of money. And so now oh, yeah. the, the state capital is scambling to try to figure out how to pay for this. So they're going to have to reduce. If only, if only their, there was a way that we could change the tax code. Hmm. That'd be a silly idea, though. We shouldn't do that. Are so you a flat tax to, guy? Oh, God, no. That's that's ridiculous. No, no, that's ridiculous. That's the most fair tax out there. No, it's not. Everybody pays 10 percent of what they bring in. That's not. That's like the no, fairest way. That's not fair at all. That's totally the fair way. No, it's not because the amount of money it takes out of someone on one end of the economic spectrum is not equal or equates to the amount of money or percentage it takes out of people on the other end of the income spectrum. That, that That's the issue. It's it, it based on. How, okay, based on current value and what you can do with your pool of money, right. taking the same percentage out of someone that is really, really, really wealthy and someone that is very, very poor, the impact on someone that is poor is much greater because they don't have as much wiggle room inside of their budget. So That's when you do that, share. so when you do, no, but when you do that, it's not necessarily paying the same quote because, and what I'm saying is the the economic difficulty that it places on someone lower is not the same economic difficulty as someone up top. We're saying it's fair only because it's right. the same no, number. It's No, it's fair because if you make more money, paying 10% of that versus paying 10% if you make less, it's it's a flat tax. It's fair. No, but the issue... You're, you're just no, no. saying that somebody who has less... 10% of somebody who has less money hurts them more. Yes. Yes, it does right. because of because of the lack of spending power they have to begin with. The idea being that if you have a hundred dollars, you have a thousand dollars. If I take fifty dollars from you, it doesn't hurt the right. person with a thousand, right. but it really significantly impacts the person with a hundred. That's what we're doing. I, I guess what it was fair. I took fifty dollars from both per people, but did it have the same economic impact? No, not not even close. Not even close to the same. And and that's the issue. That's why I dislike so the flight tax only doesn't work. In in that scenario, people are only paying their quote fair share when we decide they pay more than everybody else because they got more. So I, you I, actually are penalized for making more. I don't under I don't understand why the graduated tax is an issue. I mean, we had we used to function because this you're way. Penalizing wealth creation. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Let, let's go back uh gosh, 75, 100 years. And let's talk about the rural farming communities when we had Jerry Sonnenberg uh, on last hour and talking about farming communities. In those farming communities, the way that the econ economy worked, especially in terms of health care, was that the doctor charged more to the rich people in town than he would charge the poor people because they understood that it was a shared service, that it was something everybody needed. And so it was okay for someone that was making more money to be charged more for that service than it was for someone poor because that community understood that charging everybody the same rate hurts people on the lower end of the economic spectrum more. They wouldn't be able to pay for the health care, and that doesn't help the community. That's why graduated taxes in a larger sense is better for society than a flat tax. No, it's it just why it, it works. You no, know, it penalizes wealth creation. All right, let's go. Jay, they, we're going to go. They seem to be doing just fine. Jay, we're going to go to you in just a second. Hold on, we got to check in with Blake. So, Jay, stick around. You've been waiting very patiently. 
Um, by the way, we do have an open line, 303-696-1971, if you want to jump in on this fun conversation on a snowy day. Uh, let's, uh, let's check in with Blake, though, on the news. Blake, what are you working on, my friend? Hey, Jeff. Hey, Billy. If God says it, it's fair, 10%. We've got uh, road closures, <laughs> light cancellations, it, delays. We've got wrecks. We've got planes, trains, and automobiles and snow coming up at the top of the hour. And President Trump in a Florida courtroom, guess what? Talking about the handling of classified documents. Yeah, 10% flat tax, man. God says it. It's fair. There you go. That's right. I think um, so the original point of this conversation was these school lunches, as I mentioned, uh, it was sold as uh, here's the basis of this. For years, we've had a federal program called free and reduced lunches that if you were in a rough spot, uh, the federal government would provide some grants to states to be able to pay for that. And I've, I, we've had family members that were on that program. So I'm not discounting that program, but the state of Colorado came in and said, we want to provide free and reduced lunches to everybody, including rich kids. They implemented the program. It was voted upon in 2022, was implemented this year. It's now $56.1 million over budget because a lot more people took advantage of this than they did in previous years. Surprise, surprise. My argument is this isn't the role of government to be uh, providing kids in Cherry Creek school districts that are growing up in Cherry Hills, who are the sons of multi-million dollar, you know, wealthy folks to be paying for this type of lunch. It's just not the role of government. Let's go to Jay. You've been very patient. You're on the Jeff and Bill show, News Talk 710 KNUS. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. How are you? Great. How's the snow where you are? That's great. Arapahoe County at about, Ooh, you're I don't getting know, it. probably a little less than a foot down in, uh, Greenwood Village and Cherry Hills uh, School District. Uh, you know, those free lunches are just going to go to feed the golden retrievers and labradoodles <laughs> of all the kids that drive M3s to Cherry Creek High School, right? <laughs> yeah. I, did you I, go to Cherry Creek High School? I did. I absolutely did go to Cherry Creek High School. And I understand, like, look, not every kid there uh, comes from yeah. Cherry Hills. Um, there are kids that would absolutely need free and reduced lunches. I get it. But where do you stop at one point? Here's a good text message. Like, why don't we buy these kids shoes and gloves right. and coats and all this? Stuff? At a certain point, why don't we just provide everything for them? Sure. Just give it all to them. And then when they grow up, then that's all they'll want is everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they will pay for enough. So I want to find out when the first wrestling match is between you and Billy. <laughs> I can see you guys. Oh, no. All right, so neither one of us. It's are every for day, that. actually. We just wrestle with our minds. Yeah, yeah uh, we are kind of like brothers. We're kind of like brothers that just go at it. Oh, absolutely! It's so much fun. It is but, so much fun. But I don't get along with one of my brothers. <laughs> one of my brothers at all. The other one I love. The other one is just like he's like. Uh, did you ever see that movie Little Big Man with Dustin Hoff and everything oh, yeah. backward? Yeah, where they ride through the woods and they dry with water and clean with dirt. That's that's him. You know. Just, uh, just totally different, and it's hard to hard to find commonality there. No, I what I found with Bill is that he and I actually agree on a lot more. He's and got I, I'm I'm a cold hearted, vicious conservative who believes in the free market and personal responsibility, and he's he got more of a bleeding heart. That also so. does believe in the free market and personal responsibility. <laughs> we just choose what that market should do and what that responsibility is. is the, that line of delineation is a little bit different. That's okay. Jay, I well, appreciate Billy, oh, you ahead. don't have a, you don't have a, a need to have anything for free. You work hard and I've met you and I know that uh, you're not that way, but at the same time, I appreciate, you know, both sides of the uh, poll or the opinion because, uh, you know, Billy's definitely not a liberal, but uh, you know, he's definitely playing well. You guys are kind of like Hannity and Combs. If you remember that. Yeah. Yep. 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 I do. That's right. And then the kind of the skipping yeah. Shannon thing I got it. Oh, uh, since you're doing Hannity and Combs, I got an answer to anything that people enjoy this one. Um, a buddy of mine that I worked with years ago was the radio producer for Alan Combs. And this is during wow. the Hannity and Combs days. Okay. So this is in the heyday. He's doing evenings in New York. Okay. This was, and my friend was his producer. This is what my friend had to do before 
Combs got off the air with Hannity and came in to do the radio show. This is just the studio prep. And Jeff will appreciate anyone who's been in radio understand studio prep. There are certain things you do to have the studio ready as far as headphones, lights, live read books, stuff like that. You just get it ready. The studio prep for Alan Combs was to dim the lights to a certain level. Then there was a certain number of candles you were supposed to light in the studio. (laughs) Then it gets better. This is the final one, the one that you had to do. There were particular scarves that had to be placed over oh. the speakers in the oh. studio. Really? And yes. And if that was and not was done, Kenny when G when Al, yeah, when Alan came in the door, <laughs> if that was not done, the show could not possibly continue. Oh, yeah, that's that, why that's they what he did. dropped. Is what happened? To, no, he passed away. Yeah, didn't he, he passed away. Yeah, but again, yeah. He, and and my buddy was a producer said, "Nice guy, but weird dude." I, you know, there's yeah. so many stories I could tell about uh, conservative speakers oh, behind sure. the scenes. But no, we should too. not do that. Jay, I appreciate the call. <laughs> Thanks, Jay's man. line is open 303 696 1971. Again, we're talking the fact that the free and reduced Colorado program, the lunches for uh, Colorado, has run into a massive deficit $56.1 million. This was just implemented. And it's seen a massive increase in the number of kids both getting breakfast and lunch. Is this the role of government? Um, I don't think so. Uh, Bill, I'll go back to yeah. your Catholic on this. The yep. role of sphere sovereignty, which that's actually more uh, Protestant, but yeah. um, subsidiarity. So there's a text message here like, doesn't Jesus say to take care of people? Yes, he does. But there's different roles for different institutions. God created the family. He created the church. He created our local charities. He created the government. And he provided to each one of those different roles and different responsibilities for caring for the people that were in their uh, in their flock. Yeah. And then I just come back to the idea that we're, we're using uh, Colorado taxpayer money to feed Colorado kids. Okay, I don't understand why we're so mad about that. That's the thing for me is I I just look at the idea of there are so many other things that we can look at as far as should we be using tax money to do X, Y, or Z. And and I find it ironic, but also a little bit scary that the thing we're mad about is giving food to children. That that's what we're mad about. They were spending too much money. What are you on willing that. to cut in order to do that? I don't know. I'm not in charge. That's why I'm not put in charge. <laughs> that's, that's the idea. Is if you want to give me the more budget, pot let me holes. go through there. More potholes, but again, at least we're feeding the kids. Again, you know, if again, show me. It's I, I don't think that it, we necessarily we can't walk and chew gum at the same time. Um, the thing that I'm always surprised with, and this is why I won't say, well, this is where I will cut, is because I've heard for decades of lawmakers saying, I'm going to go and I'm going to find the waste. Nobody's ever found it. They that don't. Waste, they don't. They must actually be don't so hard to there. find. It, it must be the waste must be invisible or or <laughs> something like Beetlejuice that you can't let's say it three times in a mirror. It doesn't happen. I, I don't know what it is, but nobody can find. The oh, waste. there's plenty of waste. Oh, it's just Once you get in there, you know yeah. those lobbyists are pretty influential. Yeah. Yes, they are, and they and they have nice cars and big checks, yeah, and they take you to big really nice checks. lunches. That's exactly yeah. right. And those lunches are great, gentlemen. If you're losing your hair, you need a simple solution that works. You'll want the best modern technology with top-rated physicians, something that's guaranteed to work. Guys, you need Dr. Tanya Pauls and her team at Advanced Hair. They've completely redefined hair restoration from the experience itself to their unmatched results. Receding hairline, bald spot, or thinning hair, address them all with Advanced Hair's simple one-day treatment in a calm, relaxed environment with the most experienced professionals. Advanced Hair has performed tens of thousands of these breakthrough treatments. And get this, Your own natural hair begins to regrow the very next day. No one in Denver can offer anything like the advanced FUE found at Advanced Hair, and I highly recommend their team. It starts with your free consultation. Call 720-459-HAIR. If you qualify, you'll also get $250 off and 250 free hair grafts. Refine your hairline with a team that's redefined hair restoration. 720-459-HAIR or advancedhair.com. That's advancedhair.com. In the nine o'clock hour, Brandon Stronka from Walk Away Campaign, the founder of Walk Away Campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat Party is going to join us. That's all coming up. The show continues on the snowy day in Denver, Colorado. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, Can US.
Lots of text messages, lots of calls on this issue about uh, the fact that Colorado's free lunch program, $56. million over budget. Over budget. Let's go to Patrick in Denver. You're on the Jeff and Bill Show, News Talk 710 KNUS. Good morning, Patrick. Yeah, good morning. Uh, listen, I, I used to work at Cherokee Schools when I retired from the Army, and I was security. Right. I worked at Overland High School, Prairie Middle School, and those two schools are pretty poor. Yeah, uh, it, it, it you know okay, and, but I also worked at Liberty Middle School, and so I saw the food program from three different schools. Yeah, and I'll tell you right, I'll tell you right now, the kids don't like that food; they throw it away. Yeah, yeah, I bet you're uh, right. There's a lot of waste there. I bet you're right. Oh my gosh, I, I couldn't. I mean, in the morning they have the breakfast, so the kids come in to socialize. That's, that's why they come in, and they serve bananas and oranges, and then they made the mistake of throwing in donuts so guess what they eat the donuts <laughs> and, and throw away the wait so they act like kids money. what it's shocking yeah, I, I mean yeah but it, it's a total waste yeah uh, and that it, sense it, of food waste we're never going to really know how much food waste there's yeah. taking place and the there. food is terrible too i, I taste yeah. some of that food i would not eat it myself patrick i appreciate the call patrick from denver his lines open that's good three zero three six nine six nineteen seventy one colleen from Denver, you're on the Jeff and Bill Show, News Talk 710 KNUS. Good morning, Colleen. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Hi. Sorry. I I didn't know that you were going to put me on there. I just, it's a total waste is right. I've been in several school districts. They throw all the food away. They might take a bite. Half the time, they don't even take a bite of it. It's a mess. And they can't use that food for somebody else. It all gets pitched. The other thing is, when I've been in school districts that are poor, nobody knew who was getting a free lunch or not. You just signed a number when you went through the the line at school. Yeah, <laughs> that that is an interesting. Thing. I forgot. I, yeah, I forgot about that, Colleen. Paid. Yeah, there's a there's a keypad that they get to push a number, yeah. and I'd forgotten about that. That that, and I'm That's curious ridiculous. about that. That it could be a buffer between yeah, who the peer you know like the peer pressure, and if you're getting the free lunch or not. I can see why a kid would be. I don't want to be known as that free kid, but you're not coming up there with a punch card or a different color card or something else like it was back in the day. It's a good point. That is a good point. And I, I'm not, not a bleeding heart. I am, but I just the waste is disgusting. And if they are, if they're going to continue on with it, they need to figure out how to keep the food and give it to somebody who can use it instead of going into the trash. It's oh. not real considerations yeah, of waste issues there. Um, Look, I, no one wants these kids to starve. I, and I think that there's most Americans would look at this and go, there's a role there. I think we had that with free and reduced the federal program there. I think that this came in on top of it, provides no mean testing whatsoever, allows anybody to get the lunch. And, uh, and you know, at the end of the day, I, I put this back on a parent and just going, and I understand, look, I've got family members 
very close to me that uh, struggled financially growing up. And this is, uh, and that was an important component of them allowing to get food. We're not dismissing that, but uh, $56.1 million. My question is, where does this stop? Where does this stop? I don't know. I mean, I mean we're, we're putting, we're, we're going to buy all breakfast, all lunches for the kids. That's the yeah. government's role now. Uh, again, I'm not sure that necessarily it, it's just saying the government's role, but I think that there may be a function for the schools to make sure the kid, when they show up, is fed. And and again, I don't have as much of a problem with the idea of us using our own taxes to feed the kids. Because this was kids. a good discussion, this Bill. Great. This is so much fun. Don't forget, uh, also Michelle Obama ruined school lunches. So thanks yeah. for that text and, message. And, and Reagan said that ketchup was a vegetable. <laughs> All right, we've got Brandon Straka from Walk Away Campaign up next. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710, Can US. It's 9, 9 a.m. in the Mile High City. Good morning. <laughs> 9 a.m. in the Mile High City. Good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, it it is a snowy day in Denver, and it's great to have you with us. I hope you're staying warm. If you are out there traveling, be safe. Take your time. My drive in on Parker Road this morning was disastrous. About a dozen cars or so, mostly two wheel drive Priuses and hybrids all yeah. in the corners, uh, in the ditches, many with uh, California license plates. So, yeah. you know, you it, got two wheels, stay home. Right. You got drive, two do wheels, do stay home. If you're thinking, I've got to get to work. You're not going to get there anyways. You're going to spend your morning stuck in a ditch. Yeah, it was so. like this morning. It's uh, I'm on the road. It's uh, just after 4 o'clock in the morning, and 
navigating. Got a, a Mustang in front of me. We talked about it earlier. A uh, gentleman driving the Mustang was either the smartest or dumbest person on the road. Either he knew exactly what he was doing <laughs> or didn't have a clue. Uh, thus, that's why I did not follow very closely. Uh, I now, was not going to find out. I want to give a tip of the hat to those dedicated runners that will still be out oh, there yeah, this year. Yeah. But you kind of want to... But you kind of want to splash them when they're doing that. I just, I get, there's a part of me I don't, but I think about it. I mean, I, and I feel Turn that, that wheel yes, a little bit. And, and the thing is, is that, and this is why it makes me feel better. I, I have the impulse too. I could just, and then I sit there and go, nope, I don't. And then I go, look, I'm a good person. I can tell myself. It's, I know I'm fooling myself, but still, it's, it's and, those little things. And look, I've been one of those people that's like, you go out to do the run mostly <laughs> yeah. for the selfies. <laughs> I understand it. You're uh, like, yes. I, I remember uh, it was it last year. It was negative 20 yeah. one day and I had a big beard and it yeah. was just ice all throughout oh, the beard. Geez. And I ran about three miles in it. Not because oh, wow. I really needed the exercise, yeah. but I wanted the self. <laughs> and then, so, you, then you can also get to the Starbucks afterward and go three mile reward. <laughs> right. So a hat tip to all those Coloradans out running today. Yes. So they look good on their social media. Yes, I hope so. I hope so. Um, we're going to get to Brandon Straka here in just a second. He's the founder of the walkaway campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat party. We're going to kind of learn about, um, how he's doing that, why he walked away from the Democrat party and the, uh, difference that it's going to make, especially in this upcoming election. So you're not going to want to miss his interview coming up here shortly. In the meantime, let's go check in with Blake Olson. Good morning, Blake. Morning, Jeff. Morning, Bill. 31 and snow in Denver. The 54 snow plows continue to work with the 36 in the neighborhoods. The 710 five day forecast is coming up. Our top story if the branches and power lines come down, Excel Energy is prepared. Excel's Andrew Holder. We have our crews ready to go. We have materials ready to go. We'll, we'll get power restored as safely and as efficiently as possible. Dwayne in Divide, Colorado, he saw close to two feet of snow and continues to fall. He called Jeff and Bill this morning. You sissies. <laughs> Absolute sissies. I just looked out about 20 seconds before I called you guys. Yeah. 19 inches. <laughs> oh. Expecting the snow to continue today. It'll taper off a little bit later uh, in the day. Hopefully it'll be nice this weekend. Denver Sheriff's Department searching for a boy who escaped a youth detention center on Wednesday. He was being held on low-level charges at Gilliam Youth Service Center on North Downing. 52-year-old Ruben Morones has been arrested after he allegedly hit and killed 13-year-old Alexander Makowitz, who was on his way to school on his electric skateboard in Highlands Ranch. Jerry Sonnenberg is running in CD4, including running in the special election. Lauren Boebert is not. She won't resign CD3 to run in that special election after Ken Buck announced he's leaving early. Sonnenberg says that Boebert could have a tough road winning CD4. Yeah, it becomes a challenge for her campaign. We have some good candidates over here that actually live in the district of the 4th and uh, can make a difference and I think that's what the people of this district are, are looking for. Former President Trump in a Florida courtroom this morning. Once again, a hearing for handling of classified documents. Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin and the House say that TikTok needs to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. I think the world we all want to live in is one in which ByteDance divests from TikTok and TikTok can continue under different ownership. The possibility of CCP interference and control of the algorithm is what we're trying to address with this bill. The House, of course, passed a bill to require ByteDance to sell or it'll be banned in the U.S. It moves on to the Senate. It's 28 in Lafayette, 29 in Lone Tree, 31 in Denver. The Nuggets over the heat, 100 to 88. Big night for CSU last night. Yesterday, that is, beating San Jose State in the Mountain West Conference Tourney. They take on Nevada tonight. CU with a huge game tonight against Utah in the Pac-12 Tourney. The Avalanche over the Canucks, 4-3 in overtime. And that's about it for me. Have a great rest of your day. The Power Hour with Jeff and Billy. It continues. Blake Olson, News Talk 710, KNUS. Want to take your favorite radio station wherever you go? 
And now, there's an app for that. No matter where you are, stream your favorite shows. Tap the app to listen to podcasts. Text message your favorite local hosts. Call the show. Get the latest headlines and enter contests to win prizes. All in the palm of your hand. Available now for iOS and Android devices in the App Store or Google Play. And best of all, it's free. Download today. Good morning. Joining the Jeff and Bill show is Brandon Strzok. Brandon is the founder of the walkaway campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat Party. Brandon, thanks so much for being on the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So tell us about the walkaway program. How did you create this? Where did it come from? What was the motivation? Help introduce people to the work you're doing. So in, uh, I started Walkway in May of 2018 when I put out a six-minute video kind of detailing all the reasons why I'm walking away from the Democratic Party. Uh, the, the video that I put out ended up going extremely viral, um, and I encouraged people at that time. We created a Facebook group called Hashtag Walkaway Campaign. Uh, I encouraged people to share their stories uh, if they were feeling similarly to the way that I was feeling, uh, pushed away from the left, from the extreme you know, identity politics, divisiveness, Trump hatred, things like that. And for the record, it's, it's a bit of a story, but I voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016. So it was actually the election of Donald Trump that began the process of opening my eyes because I, I was one of these liberals on the left who was shocked and outraged and angry and scared and confused when Trump got elected. And so I went on a journey to, tr- not, and not even a journey to try to like Trump or his supporters, but to try to understand how this happened, how it was possible that the media that I trusted got this so wrong because they kept trying to guarantee everybody on the left that he only had like a 3% chance of winning. And, um, and also why would anyone vote for someone as horrible as Donald Trump? And so I kind of went back to a lot of the key moments where you know he was accused of mocking a reporter's disability or he was accused of saying something inflammatory about women or Muslims or, or whatever. And what I found time and time again was that the what I, what was being presented to the public was very very different if you watched it in its full context. That the the media oftentimes was isolating these these moments and kind of spinning their own narrative behind them. But if you actually watched the whole speech or the whole moment, it was something entirely different. And ultimately, what I discovered was that Donald Trump was not my enemy, but the media that I'd been trusting my entire life was my enemy. And that's when I created the video and put and, and created the group. And then we grew to over 511,000 people in just a couple of years. It takes a unique person. You, you almost had to transcend your background, your emotions, your almost your values and look at some of this independently. Uh, share with people kind of who you are as a person that would be willing to sit down and actually analyze these things and think through them critically. Well, I, I, the reason why this, I had this experience is because, like I said, when Trump got elected, which was a huge shock and a huge surprise, um, I, I was really scared. And the media, again, the media began churning out all these stories, talking about all these horrible things he was going to do to the black community, to the gay community, to the Hispanic community, immigrants, et cetera. And I, I, I was really, truly believing all of it for, for a matter of months. And so... What motivated me to research this was it was fear. You know, I kind of got shortly after the election, I sat there thinking to myself, this is going to be a brutal four years if I can't somehow come to terms with understanding why this is happening. Well, like what? Why would somebody vote for him? And so it wasn't again. It, I didn't expect to find out what I found out. But once I did, then I became really outraged about it because my thought was. You know, all of these minority communities and, and all of these different people who are terrified right now, are, this is all false terror. You know, this is all an illusion that's being created by the media to manipulate people and control people, because ultimately, if they can control the way that we think and the way that we feel, then they can control the way that we vote. And that's what this is all about. 
And so when I felt like I made that discovery, I just wanted to share it with people. My intention initially was to just kind of put out this message to say, hey, good news. Like you, we don't actually have to be afraid of Donald Trump. We don't have to be afraid of his supporters. Um, but <laughs> you know, it didn't go as smoothly as I had anticipated. Yeah, let's talk about how you were received on both sides. I'd be very interested. We're talking with Brandon Strzok. He's the founder of the Walk Away Campaign, a former liberal, former Democrat Party supporter who very publicly walked away from the political left and created a social movement encouraging others to do the same. Uh, what, what was the reception from both the left and right when you made this video and started this effort? Well, my reception from the left was horrendous. Uh, I mean, I literally lost more than 90% of my friends wow. within, yeah. And within the course of a year, I, I would say. And then um, as Walkaway became bigger and more successful, that didn't help either because the last thing, it, it's one thing to be, you know, a traitor and a betrayer to the ideology, which is how you're viewed on the left, but then to also become successful and well-known for doing it does not help matters. Uh, meanwhile, on the right, I was actually very well received and, and brought into the fold. And I mean, I honestly say in the last five years, I mean, I've traveled the country numerous times. Uh, I, I've been the keynote speaker in uh, just about every Republican club in just about every state in the country. I'm actually going to Rhode Island in, the, in a few months for the first time. It's one of the only states I haven't been to yet. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But um, no, my reception on the right was great. Uh, you know, and I know we have limited time, but I was actually targeted because of the success of, of, of Walk Away. Um, I, I was on Capitol grounds on January 6th, and I was one of the first people that the FBI came, arrested, and put in jail. And Really? I can, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah we, we can do part two on another day. But the point is, uh, you know, that's when I kind of discovered some of the deficiencies of the right. To answer your question, how, I, how was I receiving the left and the right? I was received with open arms uh, by people on the right. But, you know, unfortunately... When the clouds came and 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 things got a little bit dark, you know, the right went really quiet. And that was extremely disappointing. Hmm. Uh, uh, back to the left real quick. You, you know, you, you generally recognize that the left is very tolerant, embraces people of different lifestyles, wants to welcome everybody here. But you you didn't find that to be the case. No. Um, not at the point where it became a matter of ideological diversity I and mean, yeah. they loved, they love diversity of anything that's an a, a, you know, exterior skin color, sexual orientation, things like that. But the moment that you start thinking for yourself and you break free from the herd, you become public inter enemy number one, and they will do anything to destroy your life or destroy anything that you've built or, or anything that you've done. And that has certainly been my experience for the last five years. And then you said on the right, they've been quiet since January 6th. Uh, detail a little bit of what's happening there. Well, what I mean by that is, you know, I've built up a very large and loyal uh, fan base and, and they have been extremely supportive and, and gotten me through this. And thank God, because, you know, a lot of these people that have been targeted for January 6th didn't have that. And these people have lost their homes, their life savings, their everything that they have trying to you know, get through this situation being targeted by the DOJ. And just to be clear for anyone who doesn't know, I did not enter the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, I didn't engage in any violence, vandalism, theft, or destruction. I was quite literally out on the grounds shooting the video and I uploaded my video to Twitter. And because of that, the FBI raided my home, put me in jail, and the DOJ dragged me through hell. But through all of this, despite the fact, you know, between 2018 and 2020, I appeared on Fox News 75 times. I've been on Newsmax hundreds of times, traveled the country. People know who I am. And, but not a single word from any person in Congress, uh, not a single word from most of the right wing media as this was happening to me. And it was pretty shocking. Um, but I think, you know, ultimately it's, you know, January 6th kind of became its own beast and it became radioactive to people. And in my opinion, the right did not do the right thing, which was, people should have stood up on day one and said, this is wrong. What's happening to people is not right. And we're not going to allow you to get away with doing this to our people. Uh, but, in, but instead, everyone kind of just ran the other way and it became what it's what it is today. Can you give us an update on your case? 
Yeah, so I'm I'm all the way through my case now. Um, I ended up pleading guilty to a Class B misdemeanor, and the reason why I did that is because the the DOJ has a 100% conviction rate in Washington D.C. So I my alternative would have been to go before a D.C. judge and a D.C. jury. This is a district that has a 93% anti-Trump rate. Uh, they hate Donald Trump and his supporters. Um, and I'm the founder of the walkaway movement, telling everyone to leave the Democratic Party. So. Um, yeah, I was not going to roll the dice in, in Washington, D.C. So they offered me a misdemeanor plea deal. I took it. Um, and for that, I ended up spending time in jail. Uh, I ended up uh, on three months of house arrest, and I'm still on three years of federal probation, which will end in January of 2025. We're talking with Brandon Strzok. He's the founder of the Walk Away campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democrat Party. So what's your plan for this election? What, do you, what is the Walk Away campaign going to be doing this November? So we're incredibly busy this year. Um, we're actually about uh, next week. We're on Monday. We're about to launch our Walkaway Thought Revolution College Campus Tour. The first leg of that begins in Wisconsin. So next week, we'll be hitting four colleges in four days in, in Wisconsin. Uh, and what I've done for this, rather than just have uh, one speaker, which we've done in the past, uh, I'm actually bringing five. And so we have a very diverse group of people who, of different backgrounds who all walked away from the Democratic Party. Um, you know, black, white, we have a young uh, Gen Z couple, uh, people of all different backgrounds sharing our stories about why we left the left. The name of the tour is Why We Left the Left and Why You Should Too. And uh, so we're going to be hitting four schools in Wisconsin. Then we're also going to be going to Michigan, Arizona, Georgia, uh, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. In addition to that, with Walkway, um, we love to reach out to minority communities that, you know, I often say the Republican Party is not doing an adequate job of doing outreach to. So we're going to be doing events like it, deep in the heart of low income black communities uh, in Chicago, in Atlanta, in uh, Detroit and in Philadelphia. Um, and so basically we're putting a lot of our efforts this year on key battleground states and getting in there with our message that we used to be Democrats too, we used to be liberals, we understand why you believe what you believe but now let us explain why you've been lied to. You've been, you've been manipulated. We're being exploited and we're being used by the Democrat party. It's time to walk away. And, and wherever you walk to, that's your choice. We don't tell people you have to vote for Trump or you have to become a Republican. You know, this is an excellent opportunity for the Republican party to step in and say, you know, the work that walkway is doing is great. Now let's try to, you know, uh, court the votes of some of these people that we're getting to walk away. I mean, through our, our efforts now over the last five years, we have um, well over 600,000 people who have joined our movement, and we have tens of thousands of videos and written testimonials from people sharing their stories about why they've walked away from the Democratic Party. Um, you know, I, to me, one of the smartest things the Republican Party or even the Trump campaign uh, could do is, is, you know, ally with us and, and get in there and talk to these people who are right for the picking. And Oh, in the meantime, we're going to keep doing this work. We're just going to keep traveling the country, waking people up, and, of course, growing our social media channels, uh, getting people to share their stories. And um, that's what we're doing. Uh, Jeff and Bill talking to Brandon Strzok, founder of the Walk Away Movement. Uh, Brandon, thanks for your time this morning. Uh, help me understand more of the idea about walking away from the Democrat Party, but not advocating to join the Republican Party. The reason I ask, I am politically homeless, uh, personally, and you don't know this, but the listeners do. I hate both parties. I would prefer to burn them both to the ground. Uh, but, you know, that leaves us, uh, you know, unaffiliated, in the middle without any political home. It also, in some ways, and I acknowledge this, uh, takes away some of our political power because we're not wearing the jersey and not participating in the game. Uh, help me understand the advocacy once they walk away. Uh, walk me through a little bit more about what you're hoping they do, what the messaging is, and is it or is it not kind of tilting towards the idea that, because I hear the, the conservative conversations you've had, is the idea eventually that you're hoping to get them into the Republican Party? Just a question. No, these are great questions. So the reason why I, I sort of designed the formula of walk away the way that I did is I based it entirely off of my own personal experience. Um, I had a very transitional moment that happened to me in 2019, and that let, you know began this journey that started happening. But when I when I, when I had the realization that I could no longer be a Democrat and I could no longer uh, subscribe to the ideology of liberalism, 
I didn't immediately, I still hated the Republican party yeah. at that point. I mean, I mean, it was many, many, many months later before I started to understand that Trump wasn't what I thought he was. The Republican party wasn't necessarily what I thought they were. And then I ended up becoming a Republican. And so what we tell people is that walk away is a journey, not a destination, meaning it's up to you where that journey leads you. We just want people to think for themselves, uh, drop the identity politics, the tribal mentality, do your own homework, do your own research, you know, believe what you believe based off of facts and not media lies and manipulation, things like that. And as a community that supports each other, uh, usually what happens is eventually people find their way either over to Trump, you know, the Republican Party, what have you. It's, but you can't force people into that position or they're going to be resistant. They're not going to listen. But I think by allowing people that freedom in that space, they ultimately come to that conclusion uh, on their own. But if they don't, they don't. And to your point, um, I loved being a Republican. You know, once I made that decision back in 2019, or excuse me, 20, it was the end of 2017 when I became a Republican. I started Walk Away in 2018. But during those years, I loved being a Republican up until January 6th and everything that happened afterwards. And like I said, that's when I started to see there's a lot of cowards in this party. There's a lot of people who do nothing. And it, it's a party that isn't really capable of getting a lot done. And I'm tired of the failures. Again, I'm tired of the the, the lack of outreach to these different communities that we could be courting and, and waking up. And it, it, it really irritates me. So I don't think that the Republican Party are a bunch of liars and deceivers the way the Democratic Party is. But I do think it's a party of cowards and, and people who are incapable of getting anything done. And so in many ways, I feel politically homeless as well. I'm still a registered Republican. I'm not walking away from the Republican Party at this point. But um, but I hear you. I hear yeah. you because I oftentimes feel homeless as well. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, I don't know if you drink, but you and I would have a great time in a bar. We would close it down. The stuff that you said there. <laughs> there's so many things you talk about, uh, the idea of where the Democrats are and the identity politics and so many things um, that speak so directly to my experience as well. Uh, one of the things I want to ask about, uh, and this is a little bit challenging, is the identity politics that you talked about in the Democrat Party. From where I sit uh, outside of both political parties, I also see that, but in a different way on the Republicans. And I just would like you to address that. And what I mean by that are things like uh, rhinos. There seems to be a mean, not a, uh, there seems to be a litmus test uh, on are you conservative enough? And if you aren't, then we toss you out of the party and we label you as a rhino. There are some longtime Republicans here in Colorado that have recently been expunged. Uh, I would also put Liz Cheney maybe under that umbrella because she has all the bona fides of a lifelong Republican, but she made this decision about January 6th and now she is expunged. So isn't that in some ways the same form of identity politics? Well, I think so. And, and there's also, uh, you know, one of the big reasons why I ended up leaving the left is because I hate groupthink. I hate oh, tribal yeah. mentality. I, you know, I hate everyone kind of blindly following the herd. And I have seen so much of that in the last three, four, five months. Uh, I mean, I even I've almost entirely taken a break from Twitter for the last two months. That is so because, smart. <laughs> yeah, well, well yeah. because because as we were approaching the, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make this very brief. But um, you know, I was contacted by Vivek Ramaswamy's team back in uh, December or something, and, and you know, they said, you know, if you want to kind of get to know us. Basically, they offered to let me come in January to Iowa, ride the bus with Vivek, go to com some campaign stops, uh, do an uh, interview with him on the bus. And I was like, of course, I'm going to take that opportunity. So I went and I rode the bus with him, talked with him, got to know him better, so started to see him in a different light. And I started sharing my experiences on social media. And at first, everyone said it was really cool. And then all of a sudden, Donald Trump says, you know, uh, Vivek isn't MAGA. He's not one of us. He's not. And then I even had my own followers saying, I'm so sorry you got duped by this snake oil salesman. I'm so sorry you got tricked this way, Brandon. And then a day or two later, Donald Trump says, just kidding. Vivek is great. He's dropped out of the race. He's a good guy. And then all of a sudden, the same people that were cutting me off because, um, the, you know, the thing that had happened two days earlier were Team Vivek. And I'm like, my God, I mean, this is, this is not really that different than the group think on the left. And it's kind of something that I've had to, you know, deal with and think about the last three or four months um, because it's I don't like it. You know, I, I, I'm a big advocate of people thinking for themselves. And I don't care if it's the media telling you what to do or Donald Trump telling you what to do. Neither one is good. Think for yourself.
That is interesting. Now, how can, you know, if you've seen the identity politics inside of the, the, the liberals and you're seeing it in your, the idea of uh, inside conservatives, is there a hope? for either political party, because you have given voice to so much of my frustration that I have inside of both political parties and inside of our system. Uh, I understand that you found a home inside the Republican Party where you feel very comfortable there. I don't. Uh, I, I still feel rejected by that group. Is there a hope for us to have a functional democracy anymore? Or are we just going to, as far as the political parties, in your opinion, drift further apart? that we are more going to define ourselves based on the color of the jersey that you're wearing rather than uniting under the flag that we have as one country. What's your opinion? Uh, well, my opinion is that we're not even going to begin to know the answer to that question until after this year. Well, now you've made because, me sad. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just teasing, but it is, yeah. <laughs> no, but it is the truth because the thing is until Donald Trump is no longer a factor. And by the way, when I say that, I'm, that's not me saying that as in like, I don't like Donald Trump. Well, I appreciate what, I'm saying that. Is that, yeah. what I'm saying is that the left hates Donald Trump so much and really, truly is so Trump deranged. It's not getting better, by the way. It's getting worse. Like, it's, yeah. it's not like, OK, oh, we sort of overreacted for a couple of years, but now we get it. I mean, it's, they're getting worse. And until he's either going to win or he's not going to win. Uh, but either way, I don't think that division is in any way, shape or form going to get any better until that part of the equation is over. Then the next part becomes, okay, what's the future of MAGA or the Republican party after Donald Trump? Um, I think if it is someone like Vivek Ramaswamy, I think there's an interesting direction the party could go in that could potentially bring a lot of young people and younger energy. And there is perhaps uh, a unification that could begin to happen. I think older people, who knows? I think at this point, the hatred is entrenched and it's deep. And look, I want to tell on myself here, and I want to be honest, after what I've been through the last couple of years, I'm not real keen on unifying uni unifying with anybody. Um, I mean, I <laughs> I want justice for what happened to me. You know, I'm not, I'm not looking to like reach across the aisle and shake hands and be like, you know, thank you for throwing me in jail for no reason. Um, so... I don't know what the answer to that is other than to say that I don't think it's going to happen soon. And if it is going to happen, I think it's going to come in the form of a new direction for the Re Re Republican Party starting after this year and probably be uh, comprised of younger people coming in and bringing that unification. Oh, that's interesting. Jeff and Bill talking to Brandon Strzok, founder of Walk Away. Uh, I, I'm not sure that we can have Brandon back because he's making way too much sense and way too intelligent for the program <laughs> that we normally do here. I'm not so certain, sir. You're, this is not good. I, I love what you were saying there. And, and talk to me a little bit just more about Donald Trump. I find Trump to be such a unique figure, and you touched on it there, and very few people have I ever heard even address it, that he has this unusual way of motivating both supporters and those that disagree with him. I've never seen a politician that supports people against him the way that he does. I thought Hillary and Bill pissed people off. I didn't have a clue as far as the anger that is directed towards one person. What I'm curious about is twofold. One, why do you think that exists on both sides? And then secondary, once, as you said, Donald Trump leaves the stage, how difficult is that reconciliation going to be for the Republican Party on how to go forward? Right. Well, OK, so to answer your first question, I would say whether we're talking about politics or just anything that's happening in any one of our personal lives, anytime you're making a, a decision or a choice based in fear, it, it, it's a bad place to be making decisions from. And that's where we are on both sides. Our side of the aisle is now making a lot of decisions and choices based off of the terror that would be another four years under Democrat leadership, four years under Joe Biden or, or whomever, because I truly do believe, I know we get very hyperbolic when we talk about politics and we, we, we go to the most kind of extreme language, but I'm being serious when I say I really don't think our country can survive four more years of Biden and four more years of Democrat uh, leadership. I, I don't. And uh, on the flip side, the left believes everything that the media is telling them. So the left believes that if Donald Trump gets elected, it, it, you know, black people are going to be herded off to Africa and concentration. You know, people are going to concentration camps and, you know, the Nazis are back. They literally believe this stuff. 
And so both sides are making these decisions based off of a place of, uh, of extreme fear, you know, and I would argue that the right sphere is, is grounded and that the left sphere is delusional. That's neither here nor there. Um, these are the reasons why people gravitate toward a leader or something. You know, the left gravitates towards their media. We gravitate towards Donald Trump. But we give a lot of power to both of these institutions because we're kind of hinging all of our hopes and our dreams on whatever is going to happen based off of what this person does next. And so when this per on our side, if it's Donald Trump and he says, you can't trust this person or you should trust this person, all of a sudden people just kind of start doing that. And we have to recognize he's a human being. This, I mean, this is a, he makes mistakes. It does happen. And he, he made some serious mistakes in 2020. Um, and, and he continues to make mistakes. And so it's always important to continue to think for yourself. Uh, let me think if I can remember what your second question was. Oh, how, yeah. How do you put it back together? Changed? Yeah. How do we, once, yeah. once Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall, once Donald Trump is gone, how do we put everything back together? Right. So I actually don't have that much concern about that. I really don't. Um, Interesting. Let's, yeah, I don't. Let's say that. So I mean what I say when I say if Biden wins, I, I think I don't even know if there's a country to repair in 2028. But let's assume that Donald Trump wins and he's able to sort of right the ship and get things back on track. And so we're, we're looking to uh, a hopeful 2028. I think I think that Donald Trump, uh, by that point, we will all universally feel has served his purpose. Um, and he's done something amazing. I mean, really, honestly, the fact that he he disrupted politics, he disrupted the system, he created a movement that was about populism. Uh, and, and uh, what he's, what he has done already is incredible. And I think, you know, he'll do some, some great things, uh, for the next four years, but I think that universally we're all going to be ready for the next thing. And, um, and I think that there's a, a lot of great prospects. Uh, like I said, I've changed my, I, I, I was really mistrusting of Vivek Ramaswamy at first. Didn't like him at all. Didn't like his vibe. Um, wasn't really trusting him at all. I'm not sitting here saying that he's earned my trust 100%, but I'm saying that after spending time with him and some things I've seen, I have a very different picture of this man. And I'm actually kind of excited about the prospect of him running in 2028. That being said, a lot can happen in four or five <laughs> years. Let's see who else emerges. And, and I think that there's a very hopeful future ahead. Right, including who's going to be the vice presidential pick. So uh, Brandon Strzok, founder of Walk Away Campaign, encouraging liberals to leave the Democratic Party. You can go to his website, brandonstrock.com. It's spelled S-T-R-A-K-A. There's an A at the end of that. Dot com. Brandon S-T-R-A-K-A.com. I really appreciate you being on the Jeff and Bill yeah, show, thank Brandon. You. Thank you so much. And I would highly encourage anyone to actually to go to our, our main website, which is walkawaycampaign.com. That's how they can find out more about the movement, what we have coming up, what we've done, where we're going. That's walkawaycampaign.com. Oh, and one last thing, please. Uh, we have a new Facebook group because Facebook banned us in 2021. That's a whole nother story. Please join our new Facebook group if you're on Facebook. It's hashtag walkawaycampaign. Uh, we also have our own app, Walkway Social, that they can load at walkwaysocial.com. All of this can be done at walkawaycampaign.com. That's a lot of information. Fantastic. <laughs> I appreciate it, Brandon. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the program. That was a great conversation. I, I appreciate Brandon's work there. Uh, listen, we all want a kinder, gentler way to experience wellness and to overcome pain. I'm thriving and fighting back my workout soreness with UltraCur. UltraCur is a patented non-prescription natural capsule that works fast. Surveys show that 50% of people using UltraCur find relief within 48 hours and half of those Within two hours, experience Ultra Curve for free. Go to any Denver Metro Natural Grocers and ask for the health coach. If they're not available, ask for the vitamin manager for your free three day trial of Ultra Curve. Ultra Curve is fueled by patented technology to give you the true edge to support your peak wellness energy, and active lifestyle. If you've tried everything without much success, even other natural curcumin products, you owe it to yourself to try UltraCur today. UltraCur gives you unique control over your daily wellness. It's gentle on your stomach, and it's a natural antioxidant. Get curious, Denver. Head to the natural grocers. Grab your free three-day trial of UltraCur, no strings attached. Are you wondering about the research? Well, get the lowdown at getultranow.com. That's getultranow 
Brandon.com. We'll get to uh, Adam. Got, got, he calls. Yeah, Go we'll ahead. Take, I just talked to Brandon off, off the air. I just have to share this with the, the, the youth listener. Uh, I talked to him off the air. I'm like, thanks. That was great, et cetera. And then he asked, uh, yeah, is this? And he is asking because we don't always sound the same on the phone. He goes, is this uh, Jeff or Bill that I'm talking to? I said, no, this is Bill, uh, the weird one. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he knew immediately. There you go. I, I heard Your it, reputation yes, precedes you. Exactly. He even after that brief conversation, he knew which one of us was the same one. I appreciate that. So, yeah. All right. Uh, give us a call. What did you think about that? Are you walking away? Uh, I think Adam's going to tell us he's walking away on the other side. Yeah, so that'll be, be interesting. Yeah. Uh, give us a call. 303-696-1971. 303-696-1971. Or text us on the 710 KNUS app. We'll get to all those. You're listening to The Jeff and Bill Show. News Talk 710 KNUS.
This heavy snow is going to continue all day till late tonight, even early tomorrow morning. Then partly cloudy on Saturday, 47. Sunday, mostly Sunday, 50. Sunny, 50. And then Monday, sunny and 58. Tuesday next week, sunny and 62. Wednesday, partly cloudy, 64. So we're into the 60s next week. Classic Colorado weather for you. 70 yesterday. Whole bunch of snow for about two days. And then back into the 50s and 60s. So uh, glad to have the water. Glad to have the water out here. Um, I was a river guide for five summers. And uh, that water affects, that snowpack affects all the recreation during the summer. And then all the farmers as well. And we went through that, I think it was 2002, the 100 year drought, the big fires. All that stuff, brutal. So I will take water over no water. Oh, any me day too. Any day. I mean, I, I I will be upset and cursing this afternoon while I'm lifting this heavy wet snow. <laughs> uh, but it's not that I don't want it. I will be right. mad at it for today, and I, my back will be mad at me tomorrow. But <laughs> we need it. Oh, we're getting old, Bill. Oh, God. Uh, and, you know, there are so many things getting old that is not in the brochure. So many things <laughs> that are not covered. One of the things I am most upset about, but just on a side note, one of the things I'm most upset about is this idea that when you're a kid, you can grow up and all of a sudden it's the freedom. You can stay up as late as you want. You can eat the, all the candy you want. You get to choose all the ice cream. Four years in college. Yes. That's about it. And you don't know that once you have the ability to make those choices, they're bad for you and they hurt you and bad things happen. Yes. And you're like, this is so not fair. In your not 40s, fair. you wake up with hangovers from having too much salt for yes. dinner. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, just wait. Uh, you, get, you get some things. I'm a little bit older than you. Not much, but a little bit older than you. You just wait until those years where you wake up and you're like, oh, did I did I fight a bear overnight? Why, why, why is this sore? My body why hurt is this? so bad and yeah. I just went to bed. And I just laid in bed. And you know that in college and even as a kid, you'd fall asleep back of the car, fall asleep on your friend's <laughs> floor. Right. And wake up in the morning you're like, all right, let's go. Let's and go now, run. yes, now you're in your bed at a reasonable time. You wake up in the morning and you're like, this sucks. I, I can't do this today. Yeah, getting old stings. Let's get to the phone lines here. Adam, you've been waiting very patiently. Right, You're thanks, on man. the Jeff and Bill show, News Talk 710 Kane US. Good morning, Adam. Hey, how's it going? Good. Well, How good. How's the snow where you're at right now? Oh, I'm in Cap Hill neighborhood. It's beautiful. Yeah, you guys are definitely getting snow there. It's amazing to get the texts from Lyman where people are like, yeah, it's bone dry out here. Amazing. Hey, that's Colorado, huh? That's Colorado. So, Adam, you're walking away, but in a, maybe a different direction. Go ahead. Well, I don't, I don't understand the conversation. I just heard it sounds like a bizarro conversation from an alternate universe that I don't inhabit. Okay. Um, when you guys talk about the left, I don't think you know what you're talking about because you're conflating the left with Democrats, and Democrats are not leftists. With the fewest of exceptions, 99% of Democrats are center-right, maybe centrist. They're not leftists. So I don't yeah, understand that. I, I, the, can, the I can see that. The conversation yeah, I, I, get wrong. It. I get it, but I would say that um, in the conversation we are having, and many times in the conversations, we conflate, and, and, and you are correct, wrongly, but we conflate conservatives, uh, Republicans, conflate Democrats, liberals. We use those when we're talking politics fairly interchangeably. You are absolutely correct based on the delineation. But for the terms of the discussion and for the base of the discussion, I think it's okay. And I think it holds. And, and I think he's talking about both Democrats and liberal policies that he was walking away from. And he found them uh, not didn't resonate with him anymore. And so he found a better message inside of the Republican Party. How do you react to that? What do you think about his comments that the liberal messages, and he should be ripe for them, no longer resonate with him. The Democrats are a center-right party. They're not a leftist party. He's saying he walked away from the left, and he's talking about the Democrats. He's wrong. That's just not accurate. Wait, 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 wait hang on a second. Wait, 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 hang on. We just covered that. Help me. Walk with me in this conversation. If you want to stick with this semantics, I appreciate it, and I will agree with you. But that's as far as we can go. We can't continue to have a conversation if we're going to continue. If you're going to hold, if you're going to plant that flag there and say, unless we do this lang- linguistically right now, we can't continue. I'm just saying, in that conversation. We were, and if it's incorrect, and if you feel incorrectly, fine, I'm okay with that. But we conflated Democrats and liberals together, just like conservatives and Republicans. But he walked away based on those groups. He didn't like him, and we're putting them all under the one umbrella, whether you agree with it or not. I want you to react to that. What about the reasons he walked away? 
What did you hear from him while I walked away? And do you agree or disagree? And why or why not? I'm curious what you think. Well, I think that there's a, a grand conspiracy theory going on right now about identity politics and wokeness and all of this nonsense. It's all stupid nonsense to distract us from corporate power. So what did he walk away from? He walked away from trans issues and identity politics. Did he walk away from Medicare for all, for living wages, for getting corporate money out of politics? Did he walk away from those things? That's a good question. That is, I mean, it's a fair, it's a fair question as far as what he does and doesn't support. And I can't speak for him, nor would I ever want to at this point. I, I don't think that's fair. Uh, now, it sounds to me that you, uh, if we had to talk about walking, you're walking more towards the, you know, the li- the left side of things and the leftist, not the Democrat, but as you self-defined it, uh, that left side. What do you find that is drawing you in that direction? And the reason I'm asking is, I don't know if you know, but this is kind of a conservative station. So all I'm saying is that there are people out there that don't interact or hear from you, hear your voice often enough. This is your chance. What is the reason that you find the message on that uh, liberal side of the spectrum um, resonates with you? What is the reason it connects with you? Uh, The economics work. Leftist economics work. And libertarian economics do not work. So that's why I'm a leftist. Uh, Let's we could talk about the country of Norway, if you'd like. That's my favorite example. Uh, what, do you, what do you mean by leftist e- economic policies? What do we do? How do you how are you defining those? Help me understand. Give me give me a little bit more information on that. How are you defining that liberal economy or the leftist economy? Uh, sure. Norway nationalized their most vital resource. So the Norwegian government controls their oil. They also guarantee health care and education at, for taxpayer expenses for every citizen. Every citizen in that country gets health care and secondary college education at no out-of-pocket expense. They fund that with their vast oil wealth. Norway has about 5 million people. Colorado has about 5 million people. Hey, why don't we nationalize our vast gas and oil reserves and create one of the best education and health care systems on the planet? There's a point there, and I understand because there there is some oil money that is used, I believe, in Wyoming, based on a texture told us to help fund some of their school programs. So there's a point there. But I, I think that fundamentally part of the problem being if we are looking for this industry or X industry to pay for everything else, uh, we can't get enough money out of there. I mean, if we keep saying that the piggy bank is nationalizing the oil industry, one I'm, I'm un- unconvinced that the government would be able to run it more efficiently than private business. But more importantly, I'm worried about creating something that we have here in Colorado like Tabor. The overage that we have from Tabor is seen like this giant pile of money that the that some lawmakers need to get their hands on desperately and figure they can do better with it than the individual citizen can. And I'm unconvinced on, on that one. What I'm worried about is nationalizing the oil industry makes it less competitive less efficient, and it just becomes what we view as a piggy bank. And we're just going to keep coming back to it again and again and again. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying on that one, that how it may not necessarily get you to the goal that you want? How is it working in Norway? I can point to a functioning example of this being successful. Yeah, but and I, not for yeah, a but, couple of years. But there, there not are just several. For a couple of years. Yeah, but, talking, hey, but Adam, Adam, it, it took me about five seconds to Google the fact that Norway has moved away from its socialist systems, has uh, embraced stricter immigration policies, tightened eligibility re- requirements for welfare benefit systems, taken a tougher stance on crime, and carried out more business family policies, business friendly policies. Um, I appreciate the call, Adam. Thank you. Uh, How's it? I mean, Let me calls back. N- Norway can have Adam. Well, but the the thing that I that I'm interested about is I understand. I think there are pieces in certain European countries that we can look at how they have worked that system There's, and whether or not it will. Will now the issue being there is is economies of scale is what works <laughs> right. in a five million you know, uh, you know member society may not work in a three hundred and fifty million that member society. And every other socialist yeah. country is yeah. in the ditch. Not and necessarily. It, not necessarily. Yes, well, the, um, hey, well, here's the, here's the thing. Is, we're up against well, nine fifty. I know. We got we got to take <laughs> a break. We got to take a break. I can't do this. God, we should do this. God, what are we gonna do? With this you right know what they now? should do? Give us a show to debate this every day, we which we could idea. do tomorrow Let's go as talk well. To somebody about that. Hey. Jeff out here for my friends at Dan Kaplis Law. Dan suggests that you should choose a lawyer who shares your values 
because who you choose to represent you in an injury case says a lot about you to everyone involved in the case. Dan Kaplis is the son of a police officer. Dan is also a former seminarian. Dan has dedicated the last 40 years of his life to helping people who are hurt in serious motor vehicle crashes. Dan is believed to be the only lawyer in Colorado history to win five straight multi-million dollar verdicts in Colorado crash cases. Dan is also believed to have won the largest truck crash verdict in Colorado history. Dan Kaplis Law is the official law firm partner of the Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Avalanche. Dan Kaplis Law is a serious firm for serious cases. Dan accepts righteous injury cases on a percentage fee basis so that he can represent good people from all walks of life without regard to ability to pay. If you need Dan's help, call 303-770-5551. That's 303-770-5551. Or hit dancaplislaw.com. That's Dan, C-A-P-L-I-S, law.com. And um, I think, uh, was it Adam? Adam? was uh, uh would be great for a socialist paradise so we'll send them there you're listening to the jeff and bill show news talk 710 can us
It's been a wonderful day with you all. Thanks so much for joining the Jeff and Bill show on this cold, snowy day in Denver, Colorado. Stay warm. Stay safe. Stay in your home. Listen to Charlie Kirk next. We'll be back tomorrow. You're listening to the Jeff and Bill show. News Talk 710 KNUS.